What bullet also? Ah. There you go. Welcome everyone. We are back for another very special edition of the GG Super Millions. It's season 2023. I'm Jeff Gross, your host. We got Philip Gruesome, Phil Bort, fresh off a GG win himself. 66,000 runners, GG Masters, it's $150, 66,000 winners. You won 800 grand. Pretty crazy, man. Welcome. Good to have you. And it was good to see you in the Bahamas in person. We had a nice dinner. And what was it? Must have been a week or two later you won this tournament. How are you? Season 2023. Yeah, thank you. Thank you. I'm doing very good. And uh, I'm happy to join the show. And I'm happy to see the whole cards also and, and see what, what happened. And I can't remember anything anymore. I was so focused on the game that I was like, good to have you in. Good to see you in the Bahamas in person. I think we might have an echo. Is that on your side, Phil? Do you have it playing on the side? Do you have it open? Yep. Sorry, guys. Hey. Hey, listen, you're a poker pro. You're the star. You're not a you're not a you're not a broadcast uh, a guy, but yeah, so tell me, how how are you feeling? You're feeling nice, you're feeling refreshed, you got a big win, everything's going well. You can't complain hundred dollars for eight hundred grand. No, no complaints whatsoever. Beautiful. Well listen, we are we are gonna have a very special event today because it is event number 12. It is for a circuit bracelet. This is part of the season 2023 Super Millions. You can see it is March 5th to March 28th, $100 million in guaranteed prize money. As we take a look, this is event 12 of 18. And of course, this is still going on. There's still a main event. There are still some other uh, events to play here, but this is number 12. And if you take a look at what you get from the circuit ring, there is some nice benefits, you know, turn of champions, uh, free roll, which is which is pretty big. It's a million dollar free roll, and of course the millionaire maker entry, fifteen hundred dollars, nice bonus. And you know at the World Series of Poker, of course, it's nice to be in the Platinum Lounge access. That's a nice place on breaks. You can go have a refreshment, sit and relax. Uh, of course, there's also the GG Poker Team status, the champion status, and a badge. It's nice to who doesn't like a badge when you're when you're rocking, get to show off that you got to take down one of the circuit rings. So these are just some of the, the benefits and a look here at the remaining events on the schedule. You, you, you actually there. get a ring, yeah? You do get a ring. It's it's online, but they give this, they ship the physical ring, get a little bling for your for your collection. I'm sure you, I know you got a few trophies over 10 million in live earnings, but um, it is nice to win online and get a, get a, get a trinket there. So there's a look at the main event, the highlight on the 27th of March, $500 buy-in, $5 million guaranteed for a 500 dollar buying so very very nice uh very nice very nice payouts and prizes and guarantees and of course the super ranking fill this is a new thing on gg for season 2023 of the super millions there's a look at your current leaderboard standings there will be prizes uh awarded at the end of the season and a look at where they were previously and now where they rank right at the moment so you can see their raw is in first with 1.5 million in earnings and the current uh first first prize in the standings and then today phil 957 entries there's 9.57 million in the prize pool today a big one anytime you get close to 10 million online it's super juicy and look at the look at these prizes it is uh it is nice two players gonna get over a million dollars 1.351 guaranteed 169,000. any any pay jumps there jump out to you sort of a, a critical moment or, or what you're looking at if you're coming to this final table any any pay jumps that look Interesting there. Phil, do you feel, do you, did you see that? We'll, we'll, we'll go look at the payouts when we get to the final here. Nine remain a 957. Again, Phil Bort, Phil Gruesome gonna be joining us as he is here and gonna call the action with us today. Very, very accomplished player live and online. As I just mentioned, won a big, big event recently on GG. So he knows what it takes to get it done. And we will take a look at the featured final table. The players that, any, I mean, jumps out to me, Austria. Look at the representation here. I believe one, two, three, four of the nine players have are rocking that flag. The German Austria kind of a, you know, a mix, right? Sometimes Austrian flags are German players. Do you know any of these players? Are you familiar with Nemeth or Chris Rudolph? Do you battle with any of these guys regular? Yeah, Anatoly Filatov. Very nice to see him. Like you know, he plays like a little bit out of the box. 
So I, I think for the viewers is very nice. And Chris Rudolph also a uh, very known guy. I think he does a stable. I think he's staking players and coaching them, you know. And I opened up a stable also this year, so I'm I'm very interested how he's approaching the game. And Andreas Nemeth, like all-time uh, top player for so many many years. So it's a really cool final table. I don't know the other guys, but just for the three of them, it's very interesting for me to watch. Yeah, some some big names, some great players, as you mentioned, Anatoly Filatov, Philly with GG Poker as well. He is a absolute crusher. Good to see him here. 19 big blinds or chip leader, though. Not as familiar. Zero final tables on the Super Millions. He does have 70 big blinds and our shortest stack on 17 big blinds. So that will be exciting to see how this plays out. Who's who goes for it? Who sits back? Who goes to become to try to beat the best as we will dive in here to the Sit the final table as we take a look here right into the action you get to see the whole cards face up of course this is from sunday played uh throughout the to arrive to this final table on tuesday so every tuesday super millions 245 eastern with american daylight savings time coming on and we will kind of dive right in phil are you up for a dinner bet we had a nice dinner in the bahamas do you want to do a draft with players you want you want to play for a little something today <laughs> uh, yeah okay okay i'm down for that <laughs> all right all right so you red or black i'll let you choose the flop you get to choose red or black for the next flop and then we'll go first gets first pick if you get second you get second and third and then we'll alternate four five six seven eight nine so first gets one second gets second and third and then we'll we'll snake draft um down but i'll uh i'll let well you can choose red or black all right red for the next flop and viewers at home we will have a giveaway either 50 tournament cash dollar i'm sorry 50 gg cash dollars or 100 dollars in tournament dollars that will be at the end of the show and i'll give you guys someone to root for we'll give you maybe four player names and five names that are be 50 five will be uh five will be for 100 four will be for 50 and of course we will have some other giveaways including the hands up promo throughout this the stream as we dive into action we see the limp eight six offsuit jack deuce and the big blind does make top pair some austrian Austria row there three four in a row we got four Austrian players in a row there and it is uh it's going to be an interesting dynamic here probably some players pretty familiar with each other and eight high has basically the worst hand he can have he does have a, fi a blocker two five six do you think he's going to go for it here Phil I think we've lost Phil Phil is frozen he is frozen hey when you get when 800k I think he's in Mexico at the moment. Internet isn't always available, even if you got the best service. I think Phil is, is are you back? Yeah, I hear you. You hear me? Yes, you're back. I think the internet chopped out for a second as we see Hazens does go for it. Wow, he's doing it. Yeah, he's doing it. I was very curious. Like, it's a perfect bluffing hand, you know, as you said correctly. But are people really doing it in such a spot, you know? So respect already to this guy, you know, he's finding the hand, he's pulling off the bluff and uh, yeah, I think small is fine here too. Like I, I, I like to play. He is probably not going to get away with it, but um, hats off to that guy. I mean, it just feels blind on blind. Ranges are so wide. I, I would be shocked if he does fold top pair. I mean, obviously, yeah, he loses a five, six somehow. The running sevens is just kind of ridiculous, but his, he has kicker issues. You know, it's not a clear, it's not a hundred percent, but for that size, that pot, I'd be really shocked if there's anything but a call here. Yeah, I could understand the fold, but I, I, I can't do it. So um, I really respect the bluff, you know? Yeah, and you, you see how good the bluff is if he's thinking about it here with the, with the top pair. Yeah, so Chris does make the call and does decide to just, you know, I think that that made sense. Maybe bigger size than he would have folded. It looked like he wasn't thrilled to call there. He did take his time, and he is up to 12 million chips. So look at our chip leader. Be interesting to see what his strategy is. Does fold the jack eight suited with the chip lead. Of course, nine handed. Can't blame him. But are, are you a little surprised by that? Do you think a chip leader in this type of dynamic should be opening a hand such as that in this spot, or do you like to see a fold there? Yeah. It's interesting, you know, like, of course you can open it, you know, no big deal. But I approach my final table as the chip leader also. And and I, I like to open not so crazy wide, you know, because people can three bet and they do it nowadays quite a lot, you know. And it, it's not like 
five years ago where you could like open any hand and just push through like every every time you know uh so i i like to take it a bit slower here i, I like his fold well i actually did not see if it was red or black phil i'm gonna just give you the first pick because i didn't see it i really don't know or if the audience wants to tell me i think uh i think i missed it completely but I, i'll give you the first pick as the guest today as the host you can choose first <laughs> and actually there's five austrian flags it appears not four five out of nine are austria it's pretty insane out of 957 entries wow so i'll let you pick first phil who do you got uh, i so uh, red or black and what's the deal what's the deal here um well i i said red or black it's first pick we missed the next flop i'm just going to give you first pick so I, you get first and i get the next two for the... or you can or i can pick first and you can get the next two i'll let you choose which way you want to do it how about that for the winner of this tournament yeah they have to win but we're going to pick we're going to pick all the players so we'll each have a, a roster all right i pick chris rudolph chris rudolph all right tough tough pick so then i will get two i'll go with the chip leader hans bad reg i mean i'm just gonna go with the chip for 17 million and i guess man i'll take uh i'll take the chips i'll go with g my man over there in the upper left i can't I, i'm having a let's say jet gots let me make it a little bigger here uh, i'm having trouble reading the name it's yeah yeah yep. i'll take geb geb and hans okay then i take the guy with the ace deuce touch some grass okay and then i will go with hot hazes I'm going to Austria. I'm, re I'm, re I'm really respect Austria's game. Yeah, it's usually all the pros that move to Austria from Europe. Eh? The Germans. Who do you get? Overpaid. Oh, Canada. A little North America. All right. I respect that. I got to go with... Uh... No, I'm gonna go with Alex Kulev. I feel like his name's been up a lot. He's been playing pretty well. Nice brand. We're gonna I'm gonna go with my man Alex. All right. Then next I have to take Anatoly. He's playing for the win. Yeah, man. I that was I I was close, but he's got half Alex's stack. So nice pick. And then I'll take Andres Nemeth. I mean, what a what a crusher, what a what a player. And that is or wait, was that four four? Oh, here we go. Anatoly for four. I mean, Hayes can't love. Ace Jack suited. How are you going to call? You can't call half your stack, right? You're dominated too much here. Yeah, it's very close. It's very, he gets some Aussies laying it down. Yeah. I think it's very close for it. I, I don't know. Big pickup for Anatoly. They're up to 5.6 minutes. I actually, you know what? We'll give the audience Andrew Nemeth. I don't, I can't get five. You get four. So what's that? Four. We'll have four players each. Andres is a wild card for the audience. $100. If Andres, Andres Nemeth wins. We'll give you the chip leader, Hans. Give you Anatoly. Give you Chris Rudolph. And how about Alex Kulab? Those are your five players. If one of those five win, it's $100. If one of the other four win, it's $50. you are you are in on a sweat. And Phil and I have a dinner sweat, a nice dinner. We'll, we'll, we have, we're have we wagering here. And we will be off and playing for, again, the prize pool. Low, lower right, big prizes. This is a special edition WSOP circuit event number 12 here going on that does count for the super ranking. So we are... We are underway, and it is Austria versus the world today. Five Austrian final tableists out of nine, 957 entrants. We got a special one today, and we are going to see some action here right away. Ace eight off versus Ace King suited, and you got Ace eight off. It's a pretty good flop, and you got open ended, and Ace King suited not loving the board. Still does beat some hands here. One point five in the mil middle. He does check back. Free card for the eight, and now effectively the nuts for Ace eight off. I mean, it just no action. He would, there was some action pre-flop and I don't see, you know, see, he does go for about half pot. He's getting suited actually beats a fair amount of hands here. I'm trying to fix my um, microphone a little better. I can hear you loud and clear. And uh, this is not a clear spot for Did Han. This, this is, this is frustrating, right? You're chip leader, you're in position, you got the dominating hand, your opponent makes a hand, and now you kind of feel like, you know, do you, do you call? Are you hero calling? It's a, it's an important start for the final table. He is the chip leader. Some other close stacks. You lose this one. 
he actually would maybe flip flop the chip lead, right? Uh, with with Geb. So very important decision here. Very hard to call. I, I don't see him making the score. Yeah, nice, nice, nice decision then. Does retain essentially a chip lead, tied for the chip lead now with Geb Geb. So um, you know, yeah, good, good decision. Makes the right call, doesn't does not call. So he makes the right decision, folds. As we pick up the action here, Chris Rudolph, 11.5 million, not going to open the ace deuce. Andres Nemeth, short, but still playable. Stack, nine handed, queen 10 off. One what was the buy-in for this event? 10K. This is a Super Million special edition. So Super Millions for a circuit ring with 957 entrants. And we will see a open. These, these are these are tricky, Phil. What with this stack size, you got a seven off facing a raise from you know late position. Do you? These are really really tough. Do you call there always? Like, what's a cutoff to closing the action there in the big blind in this spot? Let's say, what do you think your cutoff would be to call there? Maybe maybe a little uh, middle little tip for the beginners. You know, it's very tough to defend this as a as a call, but. To three bet this might be nice, you know, like big three bet, like three and a half, the opening size, the big stack opens very loose. It's very hard for him to shove. Like he has to so read you on some weak hand. Uh, so uh, a seven is not bad for a three bet block. Yeah, I, I like that logic, right? It's sort of, yeah, it's tricky to play all after the flop. You hit the ace, you could get really taxed. You you're gonna get bluffed a lot, and it is it is a tricky spot there. I I I think that is a very good tip, and you know it's also not a big deal. I think to fold as well. And here we see another situation where the big blind is gonna actually make a, a fold there with Jack Ten off closing the action. Andres Nemeth sort of short. The implied odds not so much there. So I, I like that fold. This one fold happened to be dominated and did give up. So some good decision making. Everyone jockeying for position here. No one wants to make a big mistake. The ICM is extremely critical in that tournament where you did win for 800,000, 66,000 winner runners. I mean, have you ever won a tournament, anything like that with that many runners? Like talk to me about that. How did it go for you? One bullet, one bullet, $150, 800K. Tell me about it. No, never anything remotely close to that. And it, it's just such a trip when you're like on three days, hitting a lot, you know, every move, Every move works out. Every everything hits. You know, like it, it was a really trippy experience for me, and uh, I'm very grateful for how it went. You know, I I got so in the zone like over many hours of the game on the final table too. So I really enjoyed most of it. You know. Yeah, it's. I mean, it's got. It's uh, pretty pretty surreal to 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 take that down not one of those tournaments on your schedule that you're really realistically thinking is a thing right Fifty thousand plus runners whatever when when did you know it was real when 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 did you actually think wow i might win this i don't know man i don't know but like was it like was it was it date was it the third day was it to the final table or was it like where you were were you chip leader with 100 left 200 left or did you kind of get the chip lead towards the end no, I had a huge stack also, like uh, maybe a hundred, two hundred left, you know. And I'm, I know when I have so many chips, like in a in a soft game, you know, then I I can run it through, like did it many times before, you know. So then it was like, okay, I I do have a chance. I didn't know, <laughs> I didn't know I'm gonna win it, but I really believed I have a, a big chance of success, you know. For sure. Well, look at that three bet there. Hazen's going for it. ace jack off, not. Not a mandatory three bet, right? That's a that's a that's an it's a strong play. And King Queen definitely a candidate to four bet, but decides with the chips, just you know, doesn't want to doesn't want to step out of line in that particular spot with a really nice stack that's valuable. So nice, nice play by Hazes there, taking an aggressive maneuver and picking it up as we see Anatoly Filatov get to work, kind of chipping up from his lower stack, has over six million now. So he's in a decent position. 
Yeah, this is, uh, you know, it's early here. No one wants to go out. Even Andres Nemeth, he still has chips, right? 3.8 million, 250K big blind. He's not critically short. He's short, but there is plenty of play at this final table right now. So it'll be very interesting who goes for it and who sort of just tries to survive. It's like the, this chicken game, right? Like or like two, uh, you know, the pilots they, in the Air Force, they play this sometimes, right? And like flying against each other and who goes out of the way first, right? And it's a little bit, you want everybody to think you're very loose and you're stacking off loose, but then, you know, <laughs> you don't really want to do it. So right. it's like a really like a, a, a bluffing game, right? Like, and I'm very happy to see here, like 10K players, you know, th these guys, I, th I guess all of them know what they're doing, you know, like, I don't think there's any really weak player that makes it this far. And I'm really curious how they approach the situation. And for the viewers, maybe a little uh, disclaimer, like the ICM is really, really strong. So that's why you see these like tight plays and sometimes deviating from normal play. Normal play is much 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 more loose and uh, this is a icm dynamic that is causing these displays yeah it's uh it's it's certainly very icm independent chip model sort of looking at what your stack is worth with how many players are left in relation to the total prize pool so all players sort of in a everyone's got to be aware this is sort of the most critical time of icm between eight and 12 players left in theory right as it gets to that point it, it gets more very critical everything is so important and the money is very real right now so we've seen a few players that that three bet the aggressive first re-raise has taken it down players that sort of have a four bet candidate or a strong hand deciding not to not to make the play so the aggression has been rewarded so far no no huge pots and we really haven't seen big hand collisions yet as we see a premium here with queens over yeah and this might be a spot you know at first against uh, second against third in ships. It's a three bet spot. He could call, he could three bet. Let's see if he's playing the chicken game. Yeah, this is definitely right on the bubble. It just seems too convenient to pass up. He would be going right into top of range. But, you know, even with Queens, right? It's not a super fist pump spot if you get play back at here. You're like, oh, could I be cooler? Does he have ace king? You know, you don't want to flip, right? You wouldn't want to. Yeah, he's gonna, would not want yeah, to. I think he's just going to call, you know? I think he's just going to call. And that's that's the cool thing about these, these three bets is like even strong hands only call and trap. So you also get to see more flops, you know? Um, yep. Pretty, pretty nice flop for queens. You have a diamond. There's two diamonds. Right, the, the the you also have a very unlikely your opponent has a jack. Not many jack, you know. I guess ace jack off, right? There's some ace jacks, um, but jack, they three bet some from three ace jack, king jack, off suit. They might three bet. Like this is already not loving it. <laughs> this is already yeah. But I mean, it's a it's a, I'd say it's an above average flop. No ace, no king. Right, that's immediately concerning. And then there's you know he does have a diamond which I think, which helps. And uh, yeah, I mean, I get it. I'm not, listen, it's not fun, right? Even with Queen, like you said, you don't, you don't love it. You're out of position, 6 million. You could play it for your whole stack when you're, when you're a big stack. I'm not saying this is a cakewalk. I'm just saying this is, <laughs> yeah. uh, this is, you're not he's hating okay. it. You don't, you don't hate it. You're just a little uncomfortable. Uh, he's not going for it. Damn it. Yeah, so he decides not to go for it and probably wouldn't have worked. I mean, the queens wouldn't have, like you said, loved it. But with the diamond still having the, the over card, the over pair to the board, I, I'd just be curious here if we go for a small blocker bet or check. I, I think he's going to feel pretty confident he has the best hand. But, you know, what, what do you do if you have kings or aces in your, in your uh, teach? In the bottom here in the diamond peels, you have kings or aces exactly. with no aces diamond. And kings, exactly. Aces and kings play the same way. So uh, I think a blocker bet is not bad here. Nice. Nice, nice, nicely done by overpaid. Wins a nice pot, plays it well. 15 million, good enough for tied for the chip lead, as we do see a yeah, interesting pot there. 
that's my man, huh? the, the overpaid guy. Yeah, this is this is this has been a this has been an interesting start. Really, not too crazy of pots. We've seen some some caution exercise, but also some initial aggressive moves made. So yeah, it's very very exciting to see who's going to separate. And in these these moments where there's so much money up top, this is such a big final table. As we see the weekly 10k super millions, where it is you know it's generally 300, 350, 250, 400 to first. This is a very very enhanced. Prize pool for the circuit ring number event number 12 here as we do get to see a very very nice board connection here for both players we got top pair open-ended and we have a now middle pair jack six has a flush draw and a pair so be curious too we do see some pot control exercised by hans as yeah he's like gonna have an interesting I spot here like, i don't like that pot control here too much it's uh, so much value in his hand. He's very rarely getting raised because two pairs not going to raise here with the ICF. You know, so two pairs not going to raise. If if the other guy raises, it's really like a straight. Kind of, and probably even a straight is not raising. Like the guy is very very rarely raising, and you have so much value. In this case, he would have gotten also more value. There's so many of these hands flush draws. Like, yeah. Who cautious hands? <laughs> Yeah, I, no, I agree with you. Also, he has the 10, right? He blocks king 10, blocks like hand that may raise him. He, you get the value. So it's it's not an easy in the moment bet. Not everyone's going to take it. I don't know. Like, I don't mind it. I'm just saying I, I think you're right, right? That's that's the difference. The great players are going to find that bet. They're going to keep control of the hand in another way by betting and also extracting value and, and playing for yeah. it. But at the same token, you know, hey, probably nerves are high. It's a big prize pool. This guy, as we said, doesn't I don't recognize the name. It doesn't look like it has a super millions profile uh, with some results or, or, or much experience in this in this format that we're that we're aware of. And you know, you can't blame the guy. He's chip leader. Doesn't want to make a big mistake and is content, sort of sort of playing playing cautiously and, and moving through with with holding the chip lead and not trying to risk a lot of chips. So again, a lot of strategy in poker. Why it's so fun to watch that there are different ways to play hand. Right? It's like the, even you know solver like in game is it exploitative. These guys have history with each other. They've been playing for a few days, maybe, you know, two, three tables left played with one another or have a good idea how each other's play. So it's always, uh, yeah. it's always fun to see. You never know what people are going to do. Yeah. Yeah. I, I, I'm, I'm thinking like, yeah, no judgment, you know, like it's a lot of money. They might have reads, you know, they might have their reasons for it. So we don't know, but it's definitely interesting to see how, how people approach this. Well, Phil, that, that's what you're here for. That's what we want. That's what we want, your analysis. You've won major live events, multiple 100K buy-in tournaments. You've won a lot of things. And you also just showed that you you got a full range, $150 for, for 800,000, 66,000 entries on GG. So you know how to close these out. So I, that's why I'm asking you. I want to know like your, what you would do in spots for sure. And again, it's not judgment right or wrong, but... Um, yeah, what, yeah, it's what a is... totally different game, you know. Like if you if you're playing a 10k, you're playing against pros, or you're playing against extremely uh, experienced and smart businessmen. And when you're playing 150 dollar, you're playing against like some family dad who has a normal job, you know. And it's it's a whole different story, you know. And uh, I don't know. I feel like since I had my baby, I have more understanding and more compassion to. To the normal, to the no, normal people, and before I was only hanging out with poker players, you know, and um, it's how the how how people think on a lower buy-in is completely different. When you then get to the final table, you know, the players get tough. Anybody who makes it to 60,000 60, players, you know, they they know what they're doing to a certain degree, you know. So it was not soft at all anymore in the end. Yeah. But still, it's not like this game, you know, where 
people are can really uh, make aggressive moves from the 10k you know they know at least the stuff you know if they pull the trigger is another story but um yeah i will share what i i think about these spots and yeah as you said the cool thing is the solver doesn't matter anymore at this point you know like icm first of all isn't so easy to solve less people have studied it and then it doesn't really matter much because the people deviate so much from it and there's so much different factors at play that it's like a whole different game yeah well kings i like the limp right it's going to be pretty consistent here to limp and chris rudolph going to be three betting a lot of his air along with his premium so uh, interesting interesting spot there's that ace does seem like we have kings and ace always comes but in a heads up hot in this action shouldn't be too worried about the the ace right i mean it's unlikely his opponent would check back an ace it's also just hard to have and it is heads up and of course he does have the best hand and really no equity from chris rudolph shows his class doesn't take the bait pre-flop doesn't just decide okay eight nine ace i'm gonna start barreling off here trying to win so he doesn't he, he's not going for it right now he's not that interested in this pot and just decides he's going to check and see another check here as well from Hayes and Chris with the 10 do suited still no real equity, right? No semi bluff, no, no straight draw, no flush draw, just a 10 high and doesn't look like going to get any money. Maybe a small bet from Hayes here. I don't know. Could also just check hope his opponent takes a stab or value bets a queen at this point, but I, I don't know. I would imagine some bet. And Chris with no money put in the pot. Well done. Well done from Chris. As we see, likely a lot of blind on blind matchups today, which is common final table, especially when there's a lot of money on the line. People playing a little tighter is a couple, couple premium ish hands. Ace Jack off going to open the chip leader and runs into tier one. Ace King suited on the button. We've seen Hayes go with the <laughs> light three bet. Certainly going to be playing this one strong. Not a hundred percent sure he might also kind of trap or like kind of ICM control it and just call, but no, he's going for the three bet and very tough spot with the ace jack. Yeah, it's frustrating as a chip leader here. You have a real hand, you know, people are going to play back at you a bit, right? With figuring you open light. So when you get a hand such as ace jack, which is strong frustrating to have to fold as we do see the first jump there blinds are up so the big blinds getting a little more condensed and a discipline fold for hans bad rug doesn't want to have any issues there as i gotta remind everyone about hands up that is a promo on gg it's pinned in the youtube chat where you can go and guess the actual winning hand today so if you think it's going to be the king nine of hearts the ace five ace of diamonds five of spades guess the specific suit if it happens to be the winning hand today, you will win the jackpot. That has been a progressive jackpot every week, and that is a link pinned in the YouTube chat. Welcome, in everyone. Thank you. Hope you're enjoying. Let us know where you're watching from. Please hit the thumbs up if you're having a good time. I'm your host, Jeff Gross. As always in the Tuesday Super Millions, this is season 2023, and we got Phil Gruesome here joining us for the show. We appreciate the time and taking some notes, some guys you battle with regular i'm sure you know a lot of these guys and, and phil student of the game works hard and he is uh he's always he's always learning he's processing and taking stuff in so uh, i'm sure he's he's making some notes and having fun do you do you review how often are you reviewing phil how often do you do study stuff these days are you working hard on your game do you review final tables do you do some what what kind of stuff do you do to to, to improve and stay on top of the game yeah guys i've been out of poker for a long while and I made a little comeback in January. And um, I have a poker stable where I, where I stake my players. So that's why I got into the game again, kind of, you know? And uh, that's where I hear some strategy, I see some strategy, but I read very, very little uh, on. Uh, right now or these last couple of years i watch some youtube videos sometimes you know i like the ben cb uh, stuff you know i watch him a little bit 
Um, yeah, but I learn very fast from just seeing stuff, you know, when I see these things, you know, I, I learn it very fast. And uh, yeah, I play my own style also, you know, I'm not so focused on, I don't want to cloud my head too much with the right play, you know, and kind of want to go like intuitively. And uh, I play very out of, very intuitive. As we will see later in the, in the replay, there's certainly hands that are not supposed to be played like this. And I know that. Right. Well, that, that's a good sign of a poke, great poker player. You got to know what to do and then be able to, to kind of deviate, right? That's the, the fun. Yeah, game, yeah. That's yeah. sometimes what I say. Know what to do and then don't do it. <laughs> right. That's why poker is fun, though, right? It's, it is fun because there's, there's a lot of different options and ways you can go in a particular moment or hand. Uh, as we do see Anatoly chipping up. Tough, tough player. He is a he is a seriously talented player and has himself a chance at another big score. Andre Nemeth here, a six suited, getting down to ten blinds. This could be problematic for him as he is gonna run into some adversity in the big blind if he were to shove or bet commit. Could could min raise, but he does go for the shove. And Anatoly not gonna love this, but has to call quickly as he does get the good news. He is in good shape at the moment. Ooh. Scary flop and does fade the turn. 90% favorite needs to fade a five or an ace. And he does it. Andres Nemeth, that's good news for everyone involved that is remaining because he is out. Pay jump secured. One of the legends of the game out as well. Eight handed. So there's a look at the matchups there on the left. I love how it fans out on the GG Superman. There it is. Look at, the, look at those profiles. 11 million, 15 million, number nine and number 13 Titans of the super millions battling there and getting knocked out. As you look at their ranks in the 2023, looks like Andres Nemeth hasn't been playing a lot on played a few times. And, and Anatoly is also in there and it shows you they're in the money percentage and earnings. So that was a, that was a big hand, big moment for Anatoly Filatov, who is up to 10 million. One of the players, of the audience removed, right? You guys now have four players gave you five for the hundred dollars. We still have four and we do appreciate you guys. If you hit the thumbs up button, we will, Cue the giveaway later. You'll have to put in a keyword plus your GG Poker username for the giveaway. So I welcome you guys to do that. And we are we are down to eight. eight. Down to eight. Yeah, and it's like so much. It's like pressure off. You know, like it's like really. I I can really feel like almost this ICM pressure when you're sitting there and you're playing. You know, so it's easy to watch and and know what to do. It's just so difficult when you're sitting there. Your time bank is clicking down, and you have to make a decision so quickly. Yeah, yeah. It's uh, it is it is it is nice to, it is very nice, right, to get the, um. When, when you when you're able to when you're able to get out of that first knockout spot because it is tough to go out you know come in a final table you're excited pay jumps and everything it's a lot of pressure you just don't want to go out but of course as a short stack the risk premium we know ben cb raise your edge that that term if you're the shortest your risk premium is the lowest if you go out it's not a big deal so you know he kind of had to go took his took a shot and got out and this is a very interesting flop phil i mean this could be fireworks nut three-way ace king with the ace of diamonds and top set. So two players going to be very interested in this board. Whoa, he checks back. Okay, okay. we got some moves here. And then the do double gut shot. Now everybody has something. That's going to be very interesting with this short stack size also. Wow. He got a bet. Wow. Goes for the bet. I mean, this is... Man, is there a, is there a is there a world where Chris Rudolph gets blown off here? I mean, he's got the Ace King has got the nut key card. He might what raise here. That might be a good play to raise here, you know. Yeah. And then like, you Chris... get to fold out Chris Rudolph, you know, like it's very hard for Alex to call it the 10 or 7, you know. Wow. He does not raise. This might be a good spot to raise it. Wrapping the over pairs, you have still have over pairs all nuts. Well, five six is a straight. One hundred eighteen to one is the flop of flush. That's the odds of that. But Chris, with top set, realizing he may need to improve, he's actually in better shape than he could know. But still, would have to fade a lot, right? He has to fade the double gut shot, the diamond, and he does not. And Alex Kulev hits lightning in a bottle 
he gets the straight, the non-diamond eight on the turn. Talk about a year. Talk about variance running. That was a big moment. He could have got blown off on the turn on a semi-bluff. He realizes it's equity, and now he hits it. And he's actually probably a little worried that there's someone that flopped the flush, right? How this hand's played. He might be a little concerned, although might have heard from him by now. But what a river card. He's checking it. He's he's trapping here. He's trapping. What about the 2x over bet shove from Haas's here? Just ripping in 10 mil. <laughs> yeah, in Haas's shoes, you're like, what 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 does Chris Rudolph have here? Like eights, nines, jacks. Mm. You know, like what, what, what's, what, what Rudolph want to have here? I mean, when you have the ace of spade. Yeah, Chris has too much showdown value, too much going on there, and what a, what a hand, what an interesting hand. If you showed me that flop with his stack, that position, that is a hard hand to win. I mean, he hit perfect, perfect straight with no diamond coming out or board pair. So that was, uh, that was a magic trick. And Alex Kulev is up to eight million and. Feeling pretty good about life. And Chris and Haas is wondering what went wrong there. But as it plays out, everyone still in of the eight remaining. And we are uh, up for a big, very exciting final table. There we go, Hans. Hans opening up a little bit wide. King nine offshoot here. <laughs> That's why you bet the flop with 10-10. The commentators are saying. <laughs> yeah. Very interesting play. And it, it's also funny, like, we, we all talk about variants, right? Like, the cards that are coming, but there's so much variance in, like, what's the other opponent going to do, you know? Sometimes th this guy bleeds out and then creates a huge pot, you know? And then that's also a form of variance, you know? How the other guys reacted. It, or, like, let's sure. say I'm sitting with aces on the bottom, somebody three bets light in front of me, and that's why the first guy has to stack off you know it's true absolutely right no it's ton there's so much that i think like I, I say this a lot but i believe poker that's why it's such a metaphor for life it really i feel if you're able to take a lot of core principles of poker and understand and apply them in real that you realize in life like every day right wake you know how the weather is or what happens or things this that and the other there's so much variance and it's just important to be able to have that you know, understand that, that there is variance and things happen and out of control. And it's not about what happens, how you react to what happens. But I do feel poker pre presents a lot of collisions quickly, a lot of lessons in a, yeah. in a very short amount of time, like in a, in an yeah, orbit. I really, I really believe that is why we love poker. I think that yeah. is the truth about poker and why we all love it so much. And what's the benefit uh, of it? It's just like you get the life lessons so fast, right? Like, let's say, guys, you're like have an impatience problem, like me in the beginning of my career. I was too impatient, you know? Like, in life, it costs you a lot of money and a lot of trouble with your wife and your kids and blah, 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 blah. In poker, you look after three months, you see the stats. I'm playing too many hands. I'm losing. What am I going to do about it? You know? <laughs> it costs you money and pain. Okay, fair enough. Poker can't fix that, you know, but it's it's faster and, and a little less painful than life, I would say, you know. Yeah, for sure. Yeah, I can just say uh, to the viewers, there's a lot to learn also from uh, from watching the stream, but also from Jeff. I, I know him since a while, and he understands some things in life like much better than than the, the rest of the world you know and uh, it's uh, yeah it's a pleasure always to hang out with you jeff hey same to you man yeah i got you guys special anecdote phil gruesome was the one person that was with me when i met my wife my now wife we have a, a three and a half year old and a another baby boy on the way he was the one guy in the world that was with me at the moment i met my wife so that's pretty cool you know that's a nice thing that's a, in burning man i mean we, it's, that's a lot of energy in the, in one moment <laughs> yeah <laughs> that was such a trippy spot you know like we uh, we met his wife and then 
he had to go somewhere else. Like somebody was like, hey, I need your help or something. He went somewhere else. And then, but he told him, stay here. Whatever happens, stay here with them, you know? And I was like, I had a good, uh, I had a girlfriend at the time. <laughs> I had no interest. I had to keep a conversation going. <laughs> you <Yeah>. know? <laughs> like... <laughs> yeah, that was, that was crazy. I, I pushed I push through. I pushed through and kept it up. I love it. Well, listen to this. Look at this spot. A6 suited, a little check raising going on. 4.5 million in the middle. What a turn card. Ace 10 suited had the best hand. Picks up the, the nut flush draw, but the six arrives, and somehow Chris Rudolph has a winner here on the river. And and I don't know if he real, you know, this is tough. This is a spot where you get called, you could be behind it, but he just quickly checks and actually has the best hand. This is a massive pot importance for the for the tournament. Shipley, look at how much money is in the middle don't here. Bluff him. Bluff him. Wow. Picks up. You know, four point eight. Yeah, Chris has got ace ten suited. Man, this is this is a tough one. This is tough. How the hand went? Check check on the turn. Does yeah, he's effect. going for it. He's going for it. Like I love it. I always love it when people put the other guys in tough spots. I don't know if that's my German thing, but yeah, he gets <laughs> he gets through. Nice one. Very nice. Well played. Well played. Fifteen point three million there. For Gib Gab and Chris Rudolph, tough spot. Tough spot as played. Thought maybe he could find a way. He did have the equity. He did have the did he did have the winner, but really hard to call as that hand played out. And here we go. Couple real hands. Couple real hands on the blinds here. We got a pair and a seven suited. A seven suited, very strong hand, but one of those spots too. Do you do you wanna do you wanna raise, get risk, check, getting check raised? Does just check back. Yeah, maybe a little strategy here for the for the viewers. Like, I don't know if you guys have heard about this concept of polarized ranges. Like polarized comes from North Pole, South Pole, like either very strong or very weak. So in that situation, in the big blind, for example, you want to raise polarized that means either you have a very strong hand or you have a very weak hand and why is that so because generally in poker you don't want to get bluffed or blown off your equity like let's say i have a seven suited here i raise the other guy puts me all in then i have to fold i had at least 30 percent with my a7 suit so if i have 10 dudes off suit the guy jams me all in okay here you have it i give up like 10 percent, 15 percent. this is a general concept in poker we don't want to give up a lot of equity so if we're getting raised off our equity we don't want that we, we try to avoid that but on a final table this concept becomes even more important Make sense? Perfect. No, it's exactly, exactly, exactly right. Uh, that is well said and a very, very powerful concept. Something again that is a good way to think about it, right? Yeah, exactly. Is it is it is it a problem to get blown off here? Do I mind? Do I have equity? Do I do my risking getting taken away from my equity by making a play? And if you don't mind, it's not a big deal. And here you see a light open from Alex Kulev, who does flop top pair, and Chris Rudolph has him in a really bad spot out of position and severely out kicked is going to need a pretty miraculous spot here. And then this is tough for Alex. This is very tough. And one of the reasons why opening eight handed with, you know, middle position, ace nine off that vulnerable stack. Um, although I guess actually one of the shorter stacks at, uh, and, and at the table does open and now he's going to get put to a really tough spot. It's really, it'd be asking a lot to fold right here at the same time you call there's 7 million in the middle and you're going to have 4.8, 5 million, so less than one SPR. Guys, I have to eat on the side here a little bit. I've been no out. worries. 
the whole day. We, we're going to get yourself comfortable. We are here for a couple of hours, huh? <laughs> this is, yeah, no, we got we got some poker left for today for sure. And Alex Kulev, does, could he find a fold here? I mean, he's calling. This is kind of his time to call off here if he calls. You know, he doesn't have a dime in his hand. Does the opponent have some floats on the flop with the with somehow picked up diamonds? But not not a great spot. If your opponent has an ace, you're kind of in no man's land. This is tricky. And to make it even tougher, this guy is known to be aggressive. I, this guy is a good player. What what the lows? German player. Uh, he's known to to be able to block, you know. So it makes it even tougher here. Yeah, very, very disciplined fold. I mean, really not an easy one. And he's going for some, putting himself in some tough spots. He is running into the top of range, does, does fold there. Yeah, but he's getting punished here for his loose openings. Huh? Yeah, guys, shoot out some questions or more like topics that you want to discuss. Whatever it is. Are you? Are, are, is it possible we could get Phil on Twitch streaming? Are you? Do you, are you have any more plans for content podcasting? Are you? Are you? You seem you're, you seem re-sparked, invigorated, <laughs> and, and, and all this. And, and thanks, the game. Bro, thanks, bro. I really like to do podcasts and interviews and so on. I don't like the whole tech stuff around it and, and promoting it and and the consistency. You know, they always say you have to be consistent. Another thing you can learn from Jeff and not from me. <laughs> consistency is not my <laughs> not my strength. I like to wake up in the morning and like, okay, what are we gonna do now? <laughs> yeah hey listen it's all it's all it, listen it's polarizing right it's two different strategies two different ways of, of of going one's not right or wrong it's also important to have gears right where you can go one way and then uh um you know you can you can you can shift you can you can yeah shift i'm trying to find a things. balance between this like having routines and and times and uh, stuff to do and being open, okay, now I just trust my intuition. What do I need to do now? I need to text this guy, do this little thing, you know? And I'm trying to mix it up a little bit, but my strength is definitely this being open to the intuition and only only play if I really feel like it, only do a podcast if I really feel like it. But I'm trying to bring in a little bit routine, you know, also it has its upside too. Yeah, I don't know, Jeff, where my journey is going to go. I I learned on the Bahamas that I love the poker community uh, so much that I want to do something in the poker community. But I don't feel like playing anymore these long hour, long sessions like every day, you know, that's not for me. Um, yeah, so uh, I have some projects going on. My staking uh, is, is uh, I have a lot of passion for that. And coaching the guys and bringing them on the on the right track like generally and in, in life you know i'm i'm approaching it in a more holistic way nutrition body mind intuition yep. how, how intuition works you know um when it doesn't work <laughs> right into intuition doesn't work when you're pissed <laughs> yeah that doesn't that's not the way yeah that's not how it's designed and how's this, i'll tell you what the intuition is 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 here it's uh it's 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 big we got we got 1.2 million in a very nice turn card for him picks up basically the best card in the deck really right he gets the five of clubs <clears throat>
Interesting, interesting spot. Very tough now already, the ace king. He could call, and then if the guy checks on the river, could bluff. You know, because for me, this size, it doesn't look like a seven, really, you know, but any four, five, could bet, you know. But it's easier said than done, you know, if you're in the hand. Hmm. Rüdiger Heisig asked, how are good, how, how are small suited connector in tournaments? When to play, when to fold, when to race? One thing that's interesting now, now that we're watching a final table is they're getting less, they're getting, they're getting weaker on a final table because it's more about like high cards and blocking the other guy's good cards. If I have ace dues, the other guy doesn't have the ace so much is more important than the connectedness especially because you don't want to play your draws so aggressive in the in the beginning you can play draws more aggressive under these icm considerations you don't want to play them so aggressive anymore so the value goes a bit down on the final table but tendency yeah you can still play some huh Yeah, the, the, you know, it's, it's, it is, it is interesting when there's, there's so much, there's so many different strategies at final tables and it's always, I think it's the most, uh, it's of course the most fun, right? To see a final table where there's big money, big decisions on the line, but people really, depending where they're at, what their goal is, there's, there's a lot of different approaches and we do see it from chip leaders where it's a completely different strategy as people implement or, you know, day to day or depending what's going on, like maybe they really need, they have a goal of getting the top three. Maybe they want to make it, you know, top five. If you're middle of the pack, you just sit back and just just don't play a hand. Whereas some, like you mentioned, Anatoly, sort of known, like you said, he'll go for it. And here he is. He could easily be out, but now he's got 11.7 million, and he's he's a real contender to win the tournament. So it's um, you know, it's also curious when people know sort of yeah. the way you sort of generally play, right? To find ways that you can you can sort of uh, play on that, right? That's uh, it, it's it's very interesting. And and I tell you, a lot of these players know each other. They definitely know each other. They've got a lot of history. We got the blinds going up again, as we see it is up to 175,000, 350,000. So the price of poker going up, blinds getting getting narrower, and it is it is it's sort of go time here. And Geb Geb with a king mm -hmm. four off with a six million stack here. This is we do see a, a wide variety of strategies blind on blind yeah. in this stack size, and we do see the three X there just takes it down. I like that. Yeah, I would do that too. Yeah. Yeah, it's very interesting what you say. Like, the most important thing is, like, look at the guys and, and really watch how they play. Best would be like final two, final three tables already, because everybody approaches these things differently. And be aware that it also changes, you know, like, for example, the GG Masters, everybody was playing like super snog till it was like 12, 10 left or something. And then they actually played quite loose and on the final table also they didn't play like super scared you know because they had so much money already for them there, there was like wow okay now it's kind of a i have enough money for the rest of my life now we play you know and it happens sometimes in a i notice like sometimes when you play heads up when you get to the heads up then the guy suddenly tunes up you know and and dials up the aggression so be aware that people really change according to how much they won, they reached their goal or, or they had some, they had some mafia debts and now they can pay it off, you know, and <laughs> now they feel, <laughs> you know, it's going to change their play, you know. <laughs> yeah, it's true. No, it's, 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 it is. You never really know exactly what's going to go on. I'll say this though, we're seeing a theme develop here on Haas's and Chris Rudolph. Of course, a distribution of cards, but we're seeing a lot of blind on blind uh, matchups in this particular spot here as we see another pretty reasonable hands, queen, 10 off and sixes. Both players are going to are going to like their hands, but we do see the check back as sixes is 
in the lead still pretty okay flop ace ace nine unlikely your opponent has an ace and if they don't have an ace do they have a nine randomly but the ranges are wide so still not feeling yeah. perfectly comfortable and you're seeing here this concept again that both players understand they don't want to give up the equity queen 10 could raise also but then if they if it gets a three bet it sucks so it limps in in preparation for the raise and sixes checks behind because they don't want to get raised with the sixes and play for stacks here. So this is this concept that I explained earlier in in, um, in practice. But it's not like they don't raise anymore. They still raise, but very shitty hands. And you will see that later on too. So uh, for the less experienced players, yeah, keep raising hands. You know, it's okay, check back these stronger hands, but then just, you gotta have some bluffs, you know, and, and get into the game, like, sometime. I can tell you for a pro, the easiest thing is if, if the guy is, has zero aggression, you know? Like, don't be over-aggressive, like, crazy, but, like, have some bluffs, you know? Like, this is probably the number one advice I can give to uh, players who are not so experienced, but... They know the game a bit and then you get to a big final table and, and then they don't bluff anymore at all. You know, keep bluffing a little bit. Like, makes it so much tougher for, for the pros to play. So much tougher, you know. Yeah. It's three bet. If you three bet, uh, even a top pro and you three bet him, they cannot do any magic trick there. You see bet and, like, it's it's hard to play for, 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 for the top pros even. Yeah, nice, nice play there. Haas is recognizing on un pretty unlikely. Chris has an ace, and he does does go for it there. Gets the best hand to fold as we see a, a difficult spot, but he does go ahead and make a aggressive play. Picks up the pot, well played, and ace queen Antelli going to get no contest there. Up to twelve point four million, so sitting nice, nice uh, spin for Anatoly, and we are in a. In a in a spot where it's it's pretty tight. No one at the moment is short. Alex Kulov is seven point two million. We got a it's sort of compacted. We had a little bigger chip leader. We've lost a player and everyone between seven and fifteen million. So really up for grabs. Anyone's tournament today. Hope you're enjoying. Thanks for watching today. We appreciate the thumbs up. We will have giveaways for you later today. And of course, you can let us know where in the world you're watching from. It's a big treat to have you guys here as we are going to crown a champion in event number twelve in the event of the WSOP Spring Circuit, event number 12. 18 events, still main event to play for, 5 million guaranteed, March 27th, that begins, and events 13 through 18 still available. As we do pick up the pot here and get Geb against Hans. Hans, flop top pair, scary card, ace comes off, King Jack, Picks up a gut shot now and has kind of a license to fire here, right? I mean, he's going to have more ASAC, stronger hands, and I expect maybe a big bet. But, hey, checks back. Does have some showdown value and also just decides, hey, I'm not, I'm not going for it there. So doesn't doesn't bet, and he is actually no – doesn't have a winner. I'd be curious if he decides on this run out if he does want to take a stab, but maybe just thinking he could have the best hand enough. Showdown value. So, interesting. Yeah, two times now he has elected not to bet the turn with, with, with good equity. Yep, and we've got a so, look at the prizes there. Pretty pretty juicy with over 1 million for the top two, 803,000 for third. Everyone guaranteed 219, and the pay jumps do get bigger as we go. It is a lot to play for today. And we got, ooh, some sharing of Queen Jack in the blinds. Kings, a better looking Queen Jack for Antali. Also more attractive, closing the action, but he is up at a big disadvantage here. Oh, he might jam here. This might be a jam. He can call or jam. Wow. And he does it. Wow. Chip lead pot. Wow. 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 I mean, we saw two queen jacks were gone. He's looking for a straight or a club for a sweat. That will not be a club. He needs a nine and a nine only, or we are going to see a big double up and it is a queen. That's not enough. What a spot. 
What a spot. And that is running hot for sure. That is a chip lead. Anatoly with the misstep. I mean, he had a strong hand, decided that there's not many hands you get called by. Even ace queen off, ace jack off, right? Those type of hands that don't maybe want to even call. And he did just run into the tier one kings. Not a lot of distribution today. I don't think we've seen aces. We saw queens once, kings maybe a little bit, but this is a there's not been a lot of big hands dealt and really unlucky for for uh our friend there, Anatoly. Big moment, big moment there, Phil. That was a that was a seventeen million pot. We got the chip leaders there at the lower portion of your screen now, sort of tied here and tens yeah. in good position to even win more chips. As Chris Rudolph, tricky. These are this is to me. This is one of the harder spots in poker. You raise, you're out of position. You got a mid pair. The board comes. You don't hit your set. You know eight and a half to one to hit a set, and now you're kind of guessing. And then you get lured in, right? The small bet. How do you fold? You're like, oh, for a set, you know, but but I think a lot of players they do the great players, they get away. They just decide no set, no bet. They get away. They they find a way to fold there and a, a disciplined fold, which was correct the moment Chris Rudolph does fold there. Yeah, big respect. That fold was was pretty good. It's a close close hand, you know, like nines he's calling for sure. You know, <clears throat> eights, I don't know, sevens tough. So yeah, this is just a tough spot. You can only defend yourself by being tricky and having some check raises, you know, having some good hands that you, you call there, like Queen Jack, Queen 10, you can check on the call. Uh, you can check raise some hands like King Jack, you know, or some crap backdoor or something, you know, have some, you know, I think especially as a, a recreational player, if you check raise there, oh my God, then it's like so tough to play in the other shoes, you know, like even tens, I think might just fold the check raise. Yeah. Yep. Got to mention again to you guys, the hands up promotion. If you are able to guess the winning hand specifically, the suits, you will get a jackpot. There's a jackpot progressive going. Don't believe anyone's hit it. So still it's grown every week and you guys can do that there on the pinned YouTube chat. Yeah, Phil, I, I gotta I wanna watch that replay of your fine of you winning that that sixty six thousand person. I mean, that's gotta be fun because you've won a million, you've won the alpha eights. We battled on some hundred K alpha eights before, you know, you won the back to back titles there. But you know, what give me what's the we difference? Played that, we, we, we played that tournament, do you remember in the Sun Kids? Yeah, of course. That was fun. That was what, 2013, 14, something in there. Those were those were a lot of fun. Um mm -hmm some good memories, but yeah. Well, how, give me the difference between $150 winning 800,000 versus a hundred K winning a million or so. Like how, how does it feel? I mean, I felt on top of the world back in the days when I won that tournament, I felt uh, really on, on top of the world. I remember like, uh, that day was like one of my best days of my life. You know, I think, there, I think there I became millionaire that day, you know, and uh, on the beach, you know, with all my friends and uh, and a nice God. girl came to me and said she likes, I like winners, <laughs> you know, uh, I mean, that was great, you know, but this one was very different because it was just like so such a trip you know like you have to get like much more lucky than winning a 100k there you know like it's like such a luck and it's like and i was also in such a zone that i've never been before like so it was very tricky and very cool to see that you know like i i only know this from uh drugs it's kind of like states you know <laughs> and uh, during <laughs> during that during poker game, I was sober before I get the anti-doping control. You know, <laughs> uh, was um, an amazing experience. You know, an amazing experience. And and uh, my wife was so happy. And uh, uh, very cool. Very, very cool. Definitely one to have 
one you'll never forget, I'm sure. And here, Chris Rudolph, blind on blind, ace jack, ace queen off, gets, doesn't limp jam or limp raise, could, right? He's pretty high up in the range here, eight handed versus the chip leader, small blind, big blind, where he's going to be very wide. He does just call, and he's fortunate because he was dominated. And as it stands, ace queen, ace jack suited 3.3 middle in the middle. Will not be a chop pot. Ace queen has a winner. And Chris you know, probably thinks he's got the best hand a lot of the time. King, king, deuce. Yeah, it's going to go check, check. And then we see what comes on the river. But I, I guess it's going to go check down. So you see, guys, how cheap he gets away here. You know, two strong hands, small blind, big blind. Right. Nice hand from both of them. Yeah, very nice. Very nice. That was that was well done. I mean, that I actually thought he might jam there. Are you are you surprised, or you think that's just pretty standard to to call given the dynamic? I think many people jam, many people jam there, but I I, I feel like this is the lesson to, of today for the viewers. It's just kind of like. When you go in, like have a really, really strong hand or have a really weak hand. You know, like this polarized concept here, you know, if he check jams ace jack here, then he's only getting called by stronger hands, basically. He's not going to get called by ace 10. So he tries to fall it and, and keep the weaker hands in. And I think that's a very nice play. And yeah, something for uh, your wife for, for taking away. Very, very well done. Very, very, very well done and, and still in the game. I mean, he's actually had a couple very difficult situations on the the blind on blind. He's been putting some tough spots, showing good discipline. And it is a, I would say he's played, played very well, though his stack has not reflected that. We are still eight-handed here. We're going to play to a winner on the day as we see the nine three ten two club board king five suited does arrive to the nut flush and get gap not going to love the turn although he still has top pair top kicker this is four million in the middle he's going to bet this is something see players keep control of the pot decides to bet sets the price and this actually maybe could work out well for him because if, if hans just calls and then checks the river he's going to get off relatively cheap yeah but the pain for the pain is coming in I don't think the pain is coming, yeah. <laughs> this is just such a tough spot there with Ace. Then uh, it's just such you just hate life here so much. I think he's gonna fold and and hate himself. And now he's gonna love himself when he sees the replay. <laughs> nice, nice, nice fold. Yeah, it gets off relatively cheap, right, with the sizing and got the information yeah. that he he wanted. And does get away there. Very nice hand from Gap Gap to get away there. Quite cheap. But this is dangerous against good players, of course, that can make some bluffs here. It's a very dangerous <clears throat> thing. But yeah, you gotta you gotta make peace with that you're getting owned, you know, like we're going to see later some hands on my final table, you know, where I would make the wrong decision, you know, and it's just, if you play poker, it just happens, you know, and... yeah, but it's yeah. tough. That's it always is, where I, I never had problems with like bad beats and stuff. I had always problems when I fucked it up. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, it is. Uh, it's, it's, it is. It's it's true, right? The it, it's a very and it, again, poker teaches a lot of lessons. It brings you a lot of learnings very quickly. You have to you have to deal with a lot. You have to deal with the the success, the failure, the luck, the the unlucky. However you want to look at it, you, you deal with other people's success, other people's failures. You know, there's you're kind of around, right? Especially when you've been on tour, you play poker, you travel. Whether you're online in a grind for uh, with, a, with a group of guys for a period of time, you're playing a lot every day. Right, you're you're seeing a lot of emotion. You got your friends that are doing well, your friends that aren't. You have to worry about yourself too. Um, you know, it's a, it's very intense, especially during the World Series or places too. You you're, so you're there for six weeks. There's highs, there's lows. The energy around you is powerful. Like you can get sucked into negativity. You can also someone's having an extreme amount of success. You can feel some extra pressure. 
you know, how to do or how you compare. So it's, uh, it's not easy. You know, I think that's something as a professional for a long time, you sort of, that's one of the key learnings is how to deal with that, the, the, the wins and the losses, and then how others are, are dealing with that too. Cause there's a lot of, there's a lot of a jealousy as well, right? Like people, you know, you got to feel that you got to, you got to be aware of that people that, you know, that's why it's, if you have a good team, a great core, it's great. Cause they're happy for you. Maybe you have some swaps, some ways to kind of all be a part of things, be, be, uh, be, be tied together and, and find a way for everyone to sort of, you know, stay at the same energy level. Cause it's not easy and you yeah. can get drained very quickly. Yeah. So. Beautiful. Sure. Yeah, yeah, exactly. I, I totally agree. And I'm very impressed, Jeff, how you, over the years, you, you keep a level at, at poker, like where you can compete with the top guys, you know, you, you cannot beat the top guys, but you can give them some solid like uh, problems and they don't eat you up like at all, you know, and that without studying like hours, you don't have the time, right, to, to study like so much, right, you're doing like so many different things uh, at the same time. So I think it's really impressive that you manage to be able to to compete on that high level, you know, and I think that's because of what you say, because you're emotionally quite advanced and ahead of the curve in that uh, sense, you know. Well, yeah, thank you. I mean, look, it's it's true because it, it is. I will say that's one of the things with content as well, streaming, uh, podcasts, these type of things. It's very rare you find someone that's like, you know, and, I, and that's what I see now more like great players. Like we're talking, you know, top one, two percent that are also streaming, doing content. Because you're, there is only so much time in the day. You know, you can't stream 12 hours, have a family, do this, have be in the business, run, do whatever, right? And then also study four hours a day. So it, it, it's like, it's about balance and a compromise. But, you know, I, like I said, I'm not naive, right? I know, you know, I realize these guys here, these are the best in the world, right? These guys are insane. Like they've, they know every board texture, every bet size, every play. For me, it's a treat. I love watching this because like, I know how good they are. And like, I'm always looking, I'm like, man, I wouldn't have done that or, why did they do this? Or that's interesting. Or because like, you know, it's not all oh, that looks bad. It's like, wow, that's probably really good. Why, why are they doing that? And why would I not do that? So it, this, this to me is a great way to learn. It's a treat to be able to do the final tables weekly. Cause you do get to see a lot of high level plays and stuff that are, you know, it's interesting and it, it is fun. It is fun to watch and learn and, and, and grow as a player. Yeah, it's, it's a great way to learn. I'm always seeing like Sam Grafton, you know, he used to commentate on the, uh, on the final tables and the streams and so on. And then he was like, I seen all the shit. I can do, also do it. <laughs> you know, <laughs> you, you see that they are also not perfect and they make mistakes and, you know, yeah. and, you know, I, I think it's a great way to learn. For sure. All right. Well, Haas is, he's had a pretty successful day so far. We still are eight handed as we are, Barely, you know, hour and 15 minutes in today, still only lost one player. Of course, the blinds have gone up, and there are some shorter stacks relative. But so far, some really, really strong play. Here, Chris Rudolph, a difficult spot, ace-eight off too, right? This is sort of even more complicated than just a single raise. There's now a flat, so he does get out of the way, does makes a nice, nice, uh, you know, nice fold. Just a tricky hand to play. As it would have seen, he would have been in better shape than he imagined versus equities, but really a hard hand to play post-flop. He gets out of the way, and now Ace Deuce suited your second stack against sixes. Sixes, mild flop, right? Two overs, but the the problem here too, the chip leader is going to have such a wide range that the nine and the seven could be problematic too. Valuable chips, just just start with a call, but all of a sudden three point four in the middle or whatnot. I don't know. I mean, this is uh, these are tricky, right? Yeah. The, the, that's Very already cool. a decision here to see that i'm uh, i'm quite interested in that see that he has one of the weakest hand to see that here you know uh, and he's firing into like a very strong range from the small line so i'm, I'm surprised that he even bets this hand now both of them picked up some equity so now it becomes interesting so he started yeah. off loose. Let's see if he uh, continues to fire. Yeah. Also, I mean, the weighted hand here, Haas is going to have exactly this: sixes, fours, five, seven, some pairs. Also going to have the queen jack, queen king, 
Jack 10 suited. So, you know, Ace 2 suited does beat the suited Broadways. There's two flush draws, doesn't have a diamond or a heart. So this is a very interesting hand. And as you mentioned, does pick up the equity for a three, which he would not want. That would be quite a card, a non-diamond heart three would be the the the, the spice as jungle man likes to say who will be the guest on the show next week as a matter of fact um this is uh this is this is right now though hans probably thinks he might be in the lead here so this is tricky if he doesn't bet and then the river he might have to hero call thinking he has to hero call so this is a very very interesting board i hope he bets i don't know i always want to have this <laughs> dynamic of somebody in the in the decision spot First place, yeah. big bet. Man, the, this is this is we haven't really seen the big bet turn call setting up like a SPR one river decision where it, it, it's this is like the ultimate game of chicken here. You know the problem is, yeah. the odds is it, it's like you call, you're like don't even know if you're ahead, you're behind, you also have the backup to hit, but. You know, if you hit an eight, could your opponent have Jack 10 suited, right? And now you're, you're, you're dead to that. So like, what are the good cards on the river? You hit a, you know, what are you looking for? A three, it's not a heart or a diamond to nut your hand, a six, you know, obviously not, it's a tough spot, man. What a, what a, what a spot. He does call. Oh, oh and a three. Oh, oh no, God. the, oh, no, Phil, no, <laughs> two cards in the deck that could produce this carnage the, the uh, he, full he, carnage i mean maybe he's gonna value bad right he's gonna value bad no it's too tight no, let's check that he's doing no i mean everything misses though does he have everything it? misses he's gonna jam the ace tools no i, mean, I think that's it for Hazes. i think it's it maybe a small bet or something Hey, uh, that's, has this for Hans. that's it for Hans. I mean, I, Hans going to uh, double him up. I mean, I don't see how yeah. the money doesn't go in unless Haas's bets like five or six million and like he just yeah. calls. But even then, you know, I, I think he's just thinking, I can't, I think he's thinking, how could this actually come? Like, how does this board run out? Five, three, no heart diamond. I mean, what a moment for Haas. I think Hazes should jam it in. Yeah. He has the flush draws. He has the flush draws and could represent the flush draws. And Hans is going to check back like now, like Kings. Any overpay is going to check back. So I think it's a good spot for Hazes to jam and put maximum heat on the on the overpairs. Yeah, maybe he bets 8 million or 8 point, you know, leaves that one big blind trick. Like, oh, like all in basically. But yeah, <laughs> this, is, uh, this is not good news for Hans. I think. I mean, he's really tanking that that chess clock here. Every player gets 15 minutes, as you see those numbers ticking down 740. So no one really low on the chess clock. Players playing quickly, but here is a decision. And rightfully so. I mean, how do you do it? You just you just what do you do? What do you what do you go for? And this is a big moment. This is also why in poker it's so important. The bet sizing. What do you have? What does your opponent have? What do I look like I have? What am I perceived as? What can I bet in a spot? You know, there's so much in the sizings in the game where some players will get a certain hand and situation and not be able to extract value or get the right size. And, and here, you know, Haas really does have a decision. How strong is my opponent? It's very interesting what he's going to do. He checks. And I mean, I guess he just weighed out enough that there's going to be enough missed diamonds and hearts look scared. And now Hans, I mean, is there any, is there a world where he checks back? It just can't, right? I mean, there's no way, can he? I mean, what does he want to get called by is a little bit the question. Like the sets, maybe, uh, six. He went for it, all right. And Haas's 6.5. I mean, so he loses to 6.8. He has two sixes. His opponent, based on how he's played, never, you know, like he just, go, I mean, he's got, got, got to go for the rest, right? Like he has the perfect hand. His opponent probably isn't opening 6 8 suited as a chip leader. One of them wasn't opening Jack 8 suited early as a chip leader. And there it is, of course, all of it. How can you not? And wow. I mean, this is, you want to throw up a little bit. Like now you have to feel. And you don't this want is to the call. maximum pain. This, this is, is the maximum, maximum pain you can pain. have in poker because you're going from I'm value betting in this $15 million pot, I'm value betting to oh shit, 
fuck my life <laughs> within one <laughs> you know you go from please call 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 to oh fuck look how much chips are in the middle 8.7 8.7 what's that 17.5 plus 65 so like 24 million is in the middle and he's got to call 2.2 to win 24 with the wheel on a non-flush board and he's no good and he knows it yeah, yeah, yeah like how can you be good there like he's still called i don't know how you could be ever good there like wow what i mean that is the hand of the day Get the drum roll out, get the music, get your clips out. That is the hand of the tournament. And we have a new chip leader, Hazes, Hazes, however you want to pronounce it. He's got 26 million in an absolute masterclass of a hand. And our chip leader, Hans, who started chip leader, is now on the third shortest stack. And actually, well, basically tied with Chris Rudolph for the, the third shortest. And he is in trouble. And Hazes is in, 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 in a good spot. I mean, could he? Get aggressive here. Kula Alex has opened very wide in a lot of spots, and there is Anatoly's short stack. He's got 26 million. He has fold equity. Could he ever three bet this? I think it feels right. Yeah. Or could call also. He could call this hand. You know, he doesn't know that Alex opened loose. You know, he doesn't know that. Well, he sees on the delay. I'm sure these guys are watching. There's a 30, 40 minute, 30 minute delay. But, but yeah, I mean, you're right. True. I mean, for sure. I look. I just feel. I mean, at the same time, he's chip leader. Maybe you take a hand off, soak it in. You don't have to take every close spot. <laughs> yeah. Let it sink in for one second. Let the kids have a little. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> you know? I mean, it, it is a strong opening. You know, like the short stack there isn't opening light. Like. Wow. Wow. That was, I mean, the offsuit three, Phil, that was a lot. That was really, that was a, that was a wild deal. That yeah. Was that was a nice house in Cancun. Man, big equity. Yeah. 26 <laughs> mil. 26 mil. And, and, you know, if you're Hans, you got to reset. You were chip leader. Now you're not eight left. Anatoly shorter. A couple other short stacks are shorter. There's a lot to play for, you know, even the pay jumps. If you look at fourth, fifth, sixth, sort of in that, that wheelhouse, right? It's a, there's a lot going on there. So you, you got to really, you got to, you got to, you got to shake it off fast. That's another thing. It comes yeah. at you. Life comes at you fast, Phil. You got to be ready to regroup because he is in a different situation now with that stack. And touch who is now in seconds. Decides. He's putting the heat on. Big ways here like, yeah. Time. You see this spot is like something where you can really put the, the, the we have to play any two for sure. And mostly with some raises, it's pretty nice. And King 10 is going to flat call. And when things are not going your way, they're not going your way. I don't see him winning this one either. It's going to be hard. Nine, five, pretty good flop. Gets the gut shot, the ace out there. Can definitely, you know, bet the gutter. That's a very common thing. And has the lead in the hand. Is out of position versus stronger hand. But this is a... Pretty good flop to, to keep aggression on. He does check, though. Interesting. What are your thoughts on that, Phil? You think that, I mean, I just feel like that's, I guess his, his line is, yeah, maybe win, try to win another street, but just sort of uh, what would he do with an ace here normally? I, I kind of like it, you know, because the calling range on the big line has a lot of aces, you know, it's because of the ICM, you know, it's not so weak. And I don't think if you check on the A side board, I don't think you get blocked so often. And a small bet like this, he might be able to call and then uh, bluff the river. Or he might give up if the guy is betting bigger, you know? I can't imagine he's giving up with the, 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 that particular hand with the gut shot yeah. covering by a lot. I'd almost say, I wonder if a check raise, like with a small check raise is in order here. But you could also, I guess, just check call and then see what your opponent does, right? Even going to shut yeah. down, and then you have a chance to win on the river. So there's a lot of ways to win this hand. Let's see what touch decides to to exercise. Like you know, on the seven, you you get good action. So I would definitely not fold. Right. 
Yeah, I don't think it's crazy is in the realm of possibilities here. I think he's going the other direction, if anything. It is hard. That's the one thing about commentary, though, is whole cards up, right? It's it's a little bit you get biased or oh, you see the the best path to win a hand when it's definitely not yeah. the same. Anymore, <laughs> yeah, yeah. But got to be careful not to be too biased. And there it is. I, I I just felt like that's what he was gonna do. Honestly, I didn't think he was gonna. I knew I didn't. I didn't think fold was possible. And I was just thinking, this is, yeah. this is pretty savage, right? You're gonna you're gonna get your pretty pretty sick hand. Very very well played. Very nice. Yeah, he got an eight hundred thousand extra out of it. Very and yeah, clear. that's how you that's how you defend against these like bets, right? Like let's say you're sitting there with ten. And then you're like, check, and the guy bets, and you call, and he bets again on the turn. You know, you're defending yourself already against the bluff with these, like, nice check raises. So, yeah, really cool to see somebody also doing it, you know? Like, and it makes total sense if you have ace-king, ace-queen there. You, you don't want to check forward. You want to get in the money on the floor. Oh, we we have Anatoly at risk. Ooh. Ace two, ace four. The four pairs, ninety three percent, and that is a six and a big moment there. I mean, ace four, ace two is going to chop a lot, but that four comes and that is a double. Anatoly going to be in, and, and our chip leader who started the day, Phil, is now on critical support with about six big blinds on the button, eight of eight. Pretty, pretty, pretty intense. The pain is real, guys. The pain, pain is real for sure. <laughs> he is still, why did I see that the ace tools? <laughs> <laughs> well, and why did I second barrel it? Also a question. <laughs> uh. <laughs> It's a hey, split decision, you know? It happens quick. It really does. Yeah. happen fast. Well, you see how these small decisions in poker can have such a big uh, outcome, right? For sure. All right, well, here we go. Ace, jack off, ace, jack off. We see a flat position advantage with the chips, and these are one of those spots where it's tough, right? It's tough to play out of position when you're sharing the same hand, and a little slight advantage, too, with the ace of spade there. Pretty pretty big spot and overpaid is going to be and putting a lot of pressure when there's the two two million and six million stack seven million he's definitely there's actually four stacks shorter than him and he's relatively short himself this is not a fun spot to be in yeah I'm taking the ace jack with the ace of spades here yeah. I'm checking the comments. Yeah, I mean, somebody's commenting on the ace twos with the sixes hand. Yeah, I agree. I don't like the check on the river with the sixes. I think everything else checks behind. Yeah, tough spot. I mean, just tough spot. Overbet. You know, it's one of those things you can know you're getting played back at, but even here, it's like, all right, what do you you, you beat? You beat king queen. You know, it's jack queen. You're blocking a jack. So it's kind of like what hand? It's not a great situation here for you. But then again, you also could take a shot. Maybe one aggressive move. Although I just don't feel like it's the time, right, to really be check raising and getting cute here with these really short stacks, big pay jumps. And a interesting turn card here as the king comes in a jack of spades relevant card. So this could get a little little dicey as well. Yeah. I'm sure the ace jack is gonna continue. Uh, yeah, what we said both at jack. I think the cutoff is gonna 
continue now. Huh? He can get nines, jacks to fold. Seven, seven, eight, ten, nine will probably fold. I don't know. Yeah, he's going for it. What do we do there? Yeah, and I think X Jack has to fold now. And that's the power of position and the power of ICM here. Yeah. That we see. Yeah. Pretty, pretty, yeah. I mean, it gets put in a pretty, pretty yeah, it's a tough spot. 27 million. I mean, touching Hayes is now separating themselves. They have over 53 million of the chips in play, and it's getting a bit of a problem. This is actually quickly becoming a dynamic fill where it's, it's just the yin and yang it's it's strong the two two big <laughs> stacks everyone else is kind of in a icm paradox here right you really don't like it's cat and mouse now you don't want to be on the chopping block six million eight million seven million the 2.3 is like in critical spot and if you got six six and seven yeah now the icm pressure is real like a guy like like gap gap He's feeling like in a prison right now. Like... I'll be back in a minute, yeah? Sounds good. All right, well, we lose Phil for a second, and we are going to be still eight-handed. We are still eight-handed. We are we are literally, I mean, Haas is in, in touch could run away with this, guys. I will cue the giveaway here in a second. And we are, we are still, we are still in a eight-handed deadlock. I mean, this is going to get super interesting. Alex Kulev now, does he shove? He's been aggressive and he goes for the min raise, really opening up the door for Hazes to put some pressure on here. I wonder if we just, you know, what we, what, what options he has here. He really has all options here. If you, if you got 10 4 you're kind of like, wow, what is it? It's like, he's got to be so strong to be inducing into the chip leader. But at the same time, does he want to call off? And also, does 10 4 suited? And he does call. King 9 suited hits a hammer lock on the hand. What a flop. Wow. King nine suited. I mean, this is this is a nice spot, right? You're short. It's important. There's other stacks in similar spot, and here he is thinking what to do here. Does he ever try to get coy? I, I think it's just too cute not to bet small. He does bet small, and Haas is not one.
And we are welcoming everyone in watching worldwide. See a lot of people watching. This is a very special show. This is event number 12 of the WSOP circuit. It's a ring. It's going to come in the mail. A lot of benefits come with that, as we said at the beginning of the show. And we are seeing some world-class talent. And look at the aces in the big blind. I mean, overpaid, tough spot too. Haas's could just rip into, I think Haas is going to shove here. I mean, this is Chris, ICM wise, he literally can't call with the 2 million stack, 666. Six, six. So he's going to shove, I think, I think he could go 3X, I guess, and not shove and then fold or not put the rest of it in. But I think a lot of players would just shove here. There it is. What a spot for aces. And it is 7-3 off for aces. And hey, anything can happen, but yeah, that's a bit of a misstep. Aces in good spot. Let's see it. Let's see the board. See if we get a sweat. Not much. Top set needs a jack queen to chop. There's a jack. Ooh, 4.55% to chop. That would be special. I've seen a lot of things in my day. This would be up there if it's paint. How about a little paint sweat? Ooh, it's a no, it's a nine. All right. We we get the double. We get the double. We get the double. And it is a new game. A new game. Haas is on 20 mil chris rudolph right there 27 million and again team austria looking very very strong here with four players over 10 million 20 14 27 and 10. we see phil gruesome take a quick break we are live with you i'm gonna adjust and put the the, the giveaway once we get down to six handed i'll do that this has been a while though right we've been playing some great poker we are almost two hours in lost a player but hey it's a special edition of super millions this will be for the super million rankings on the super ranking and it is it is anyone's game big hand there jack queen gonna pick it up short stack keeping it alive as again was the chip leader in the moment and we are We are, we are, Phil, we, are, we just saw you walked away. Hazes gets seven three off. I said it's just such a perfect spot to shove with the stacks. Chris got to be so tight. He gets aces in the big blind versus seven three off suit for a full double and flops ace high. Ace high, no ace ten jack, just ninety nine percent for a fourteen. I mean, what a, what a what a moment. What a what a what a spot to get in. It would be interesting to see how tight Chris actually folds there, right? Like you know, is it ace ten off? Does he? Does he take the spot or does he just have to fold? Um, oh, Hazes shot the 7 3 into Chris Aces. Yeah. Yeah, I don't know what to call them. Like, it's such a tough spot. All right, guys, I poured myself a glass of uh, rosé wine to celebrate the day. Jeff, thanks for having me. Oh, man. <laughs> Cheers. Cheers to you. Cheers to your 800K win from $150. What up, BC in the chat? Good to see you guys. A lot of familiar faces here on YouTube. We have a great community, Super Millions Weekly. This is, again, season 2023, and we are in for another special episode today with the big guest, Again, the man, the myth, the legend. <laughs> yeah, what do you guys want to hear? More, more about strategy or more like mindset or more like, or fun, some fun, fun, some fun stories or or how we would play the hands? There's some great questions. There's some great questions. There are some great people. Great, great I, 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 poker community is super, super, they, they, I just feel like, I don't know, there's something special about poker. That's the same thing with me. I think I'll be in poker, whether I'm playing, I'll always play a little bit, try to play, you know, as a kid, it's harder, but tournaments are fun, cash is fun, content is fun, but I just love poker. I love the industry, I love the people. And I, like I say this all the time, I would not want to do like I, you know, I'm 36. I've been playing 20 plus years, but professionally, whatever, call it, you know, since caught like, you know, I don't know, 18, 17 years. There's nothing I would rather do. You could tell me you could trade or do this and make more money or whatever. Like I don't know. I, I the experiences, the people, the stories, the 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 thing, the travel. Like I, I, there's nothing I would rather do in the world, honestly. 
There's real. I don't. Yeah, think yeah. Anything. I really love the poker community, guys. It's such a such an amazing community. Yeah. And I miss that, you know. I went kind of out of poker. I stopped my career, you know, and I was doing business outside of the poker world, you know. And now I'm thinking, why did I ever do that? You know, like the poker community is exactly my people. I understand how they think. They love me, you know, and I know how the business works. So I, I want to get more behind the scenes, you know, but I, I still love the community so much. And I think it has to do with this pain <laughs> that we're talking about today. You know, like if you're in the poker world and even as a recreational player, you know, you must be like pain resistant. You must kind of like appreciate the pain. And I, I feel like it's because the pain makes you grow. So I think we all have in common that we want to grow like very, very fast. And that's what I really appreciate about humans, you know, that they want to they want to become something bigger, you know, they want to be stronger or softer or better as a human, right? And it's like the fastest way that one of the fastest ways I've seen. Like, how do you develop as a human? Like, yeah, try to try to play some poker and it, it will go very fast. Absolutely. And we are seeing a, a very, very, this, these spots are getting super, super dicey, super tight with these stacks though. There's still four relatively, you know, we'll call it short stacks. And here we got Jack five and queen deuce, queen deuce suited, had the best hand, does not have the best hand. The turn is now the king, three hearts on board, no player with the heart. Jack five is the, the currently best hand, bit of top pair. Now a king arrives, still winning, both with the same stack, very interesting spots. I would bet now this Jack five against anybody who's like, not like super aggro and can check raise me here. But we're playing a 10 K. I, I kind of forget that all the time. Like these guys, they, they definitely have, have some moves going on. So it's even tougher to play this hand. So I understand the check back. And now I think it's just going to check back fold. Yeah, two million in the middle. I mean, important pot puts him up to eight point seven. He assuming he wins, gets a showdown, which we see he will be winning the hand almost surely, unless somehow I was betting in, in a which obviously this particular holding queen do suited on this board, uh, not uh, not likely there'll be that kind of line going. But you know, again, Hans is super critically short, two point two million, and you see the jump there between eighth and seventh. Real money, all players aware of it. Hazes went for it against Chris Rudolph in that dynamic and ran into it. And here we go. I guess he is uh, still thinking about it. Still thinking about sizing, what could happen, what are the risks, what are the downsides to betting? Do I ever get put in the cage? If I get called, what am I getting called by? Maybe a small bet, but yeah, I think in this case nothing's gonna work. <laughs> yeah, but who knows? We have seen some crazy calls. Somebody's asking what this painting here is. You, you guys probably know the yin yang, right? The black and the white, and this is another version that that somebody made for me, an Indian artist, and it's real gold, Jeff around it that's sick. and uh, i really love it and i'm trying to you know like in poker i'm trying to explain this sometimes to my students this yin and yang in poker you could see the one side as like a fundamental strategy and exploits right the one side is like having a understanding of the game and the strategy and so on and the other side is intuition and intuition has no reason that like you cannot mentally explain, oh, I feel like now I have to bet out of intuition it has no reason, right? So that is the kind of female part, you could say. And I think the 
first in the poker, we were all intuition, all were field players. And then the solvers came in and we became all like strategy players pretty much. And now the next generation or the generation that is on top now, they have both really developed, you know. And I'm looking forward to see more of that development to more intuition, you know. And uh, I can really recommend working on this part, uh, guys. This is the key to success and um, the key to my success. I've never studied much, you know. And I, I always worked on my intuition a lot and it's been paying off. Chris Rudolph, 14.7 intuition, certainly one of the intangibles, I think, in poker. You know, I love like Madden or EA Sports, these games, FIFA, right? They rank players, speed, passing, agility, strength, endurance, all these things, right? Like a poker player, right? Same thing. You got you got cards. Everyone's got their strengths or weaknesses, game selection, uh, tilt, vices, right? Like pits or whatever, spot, you know, stuff like if, if you're a poker player, <laughs> yeah. that would actually be a fun thing to make wouldn't it feel to make like yeah a, we should have like a, a, a poker we should have a card we should have a card we should yeah. have a card game right <laughs> yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah exactly like you get a big head like one of those yeah you print out and you have the you know like a like those feet they give the players their card with their their ratings and yeah every player gets yeah yeah you know and it could and be really it's cool true, get like it's, it's like magic the gathering or something yeah and the luck booster or something like this you know and then like the luck turns around, right? The luck goes to everybody at some point, right? It depends what you're making out of it and so on, you know? And I think it, it turns around like sometimes that area is more needed. So let's say in bad times, you need more of the solid strategy. In good times, you need more of that intuition. I hope you get what I mean. You know, in bad times, don't trust your intuition. Don't play intuitive. Play like a solid strategy, you know. And in good times, you can really uh, go out of line, as it's called. And it's going to be interesting to see here on this point, because Chris Rudolph, I know, is a very fundamental player. Like, very, he's not, he, he will have a, a strong rating on the GTO perspective and the exploits. He knows his stuff, and I don't think he is much into intuition and, and so on. So with him, we can really learn like how the top pros are approaching these spots like strategically. He really knows his, his stuff, you know? And Anatoly, if he manages to get some chips, we will probably see some more out of the box, out of line plays here. Chat, do we know some more players here by real name? Touch some touch some grass maybe or get gap or overpay my guy. Ace, uh, uh, so a good question about intuition. Uh, obviously, intuition is sort of it's a, it's one of those intangibles that you can kind of give in. But someone asking, see in the chat here, I like the question about how you work on it. Do you, is there is there ways to to help, like to quiz or to practice or to enhance your intuition? Do you feel any 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 ways in particular? Yeah, it's a very good question because. It's a little hard to teach because it works differently in, in different ways, right? Like di different people have different kinds of intuition. Mm. But definitely you can work on it in real life, you know, like when you're having a conversation with somebody, you know, what they really want from you, you know, what, what are they feeling? What are they thinking? If you become more aware and more conscious in, in, in normal life, that will help you with that sensitivity. Of course, meditation really, you know, opened the door for me there, you know. Um, 
and and to listen to yourself is, is a is a bit like the challenge here. Tough spot here for overpaid. I think he's gonna get away. One of the things how to work on intuition is like trusting what you feel and being more aware of feeling than of thinking. You know, you have in poker, you have the thoughts going through that's one part if you at the same time have emotions uh, emotional awareness then you have two things to combine and, and two things to fight with instead of just one yep no for sure yeah it's uh this is man, a tough spot east queen so ranges in the big blind wide you, you there's there's things that miss Got ace queen. I feel like this is one of the hardest hands to play ace queen offsuit. Yeah, but strategically he's blocking a lot of the bluffs, queen high. Yeah. And I, and, and maybe maybe some exploit I use for for the for the for the guys is a little bit like when a when a call is too easy, it's probably not a call. Meaning like the other guy sits there and he puts you on a hand, you know, like let, let's say touch some grass sits there with nine ten, and now he has nothing and he could bluff, you know, he could also bluff a little bigger to make it more difficult for you to call with the ace high. Yeah. Yeah. Shout out to my man, Brijesh tuning in. Got some, got, we got 2300 on watching. We got a 50 or hundred dollar giveaway. My man, Phil and I have a big dinner bet. It's been, it's, I'll be honest. There's been a lot. It's starting to heat up. Cause it's, there's a lot of super short stacks. It's getting very interesting, but we've gone two hours and had one knockout only. So it's been, you know, there's been, there's that not really been, uh, even the, the big pot was at the river, right? It wasn't like an all in flip or something. There hasn't yeah. been critically like super swingy. There's a lot of post flop, a lot of good decision-making. The game has really changed in that direction. It's much more, much less shoving going on, especially on the final table. It's much more post flop action. Oh, and we have a bluff coming in here. I like it, and it's, it's through. And who has the uh, hazes of the two of us? Uh, he. So it's been two hours now. Let me let me re <laughs> let me think about who I have. You have Anatoly. I have Geb Geb. I have Alex. You have overpaid. You have I had Hans, right? The chip leader who is <laughs> in trouble. Um, I'm a little fuzzy on the on um on Chris Rudolph. I had Chris Rudolph. Chris. No? Yeah, you had Chris. Did did you get? Is there? There's no way you have hazes and touch, is it? You can't. No, you have, you have touch. touch. Yeah, that's right. And you have, I think you have houses. Yeah. Then I have houses. Okay. Queen King suited premium hand touch 33 mil 34 mil actually I mean this is uh man Anatoly and Hans Anatoly sort of you said he goes for the win but I'll tell you what right now he's gonna make sure he goes for a pay jump at least with 1.3 to 3.8 with that stack there and the blinds are up to 5500 so Hans on absolute critical less than three big blinds not looking yeah. great for our former start of the day chip leader we will see 100k all in, an all in worth 100k very soon.
what I mean by that point before, like the bed sizing, I look a lot for the bed sizing, you know, and all the top pros, they, they say they are, these balance, they are balanced in the bed sizing, right? Like they bet the same amount if they have it or not. And I feel like in these big spots, in these big final tables, they don't do that anymore. They do whatever fits in the moment because it's such a huge spot and they're not balanced anymore. They pretend to be balanced and they're not balanced and I'm exploiting that a lot. I have been exploiting that a lot, that in big tournaments and big spots, they are not balancing. My man's taught, yeah, true. GLG Poker asking, you can switch the big blind view. Leave it in the chips, kind of more exciting. Luckily, 25500 pretty easy to determine the big blinds, right? You can see chip leader here with 35 mils, got yeah. 70 big blinds. And Tali was seven and a half, just two times what the 500 is. But uh, this is a overpaid two tens. Yeah, this is too strong for me. And he has fold equity. Um, I'm not folding nor calling this hand. Wow. I mean, the crazy thing is, it's yeah, it's such a clear shove, but at the same time, it's just not right. This guy, there's 3.7 and 1.2 million, and you could be on your. Do, do you want to go against Ace Five suited, or you know, if somehow he has Queen Jack or King Queen off, and you just have to flip? Like, it's pretty sick. I, 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 I just. Can he ever? He can't fold though, right? I mean, that would be insane, wouldn't it? Ah, at least call. Huh? You could call and see what comes, and like you know, if two overcards come, you can't get away, kind of. But it's also against the clear chip leader. It's not like Chris is opening or Hayes is under the gun or under the gun plus one with the chip leader behind and whatever. I mean, it's like the guy literally could have any two, and and I think you, I what what it just yeah, I don't know. It's like, it's so obvious to say he has to shove, right? But it, like, if we, it just happens to have like Queen Jack or Ace Jack off here and you're flipping, it's so sick. It is, it's a sick spot. Yeah, but he, I gotta, he's gonna do it. He's just gathering himself. Yeah, it's not such a great spot, but I, I'm, I'm going for it. I... Yeah, I mean, he. I just. I, what do you think? What's your? What's the audience? What do you think? Is he gonna shove, fold, call? I think this is actually pretty close to all three options. Truthfully, I, I, think, <laughs> I think I think folding would be insane. But I, I I think he's really considering it. Um. Yeah, I think like thirty percent fold, twenty percent call, and fifty percent all in. Yeah, that's pretty good. Audience. Santa Polo, Michael Ryan, I see you guys in there being active. What do you think? What do you think? Yeah, what do you think? Not what's the right play. What is what is his play? Come on, overplay. We want to, we, I need you to go in here. We need you to win this thing. He's he's gonna shove, right? He's just gonna figure it out. He's gonna get there. I mean, look at the pay jumps. If we can if you illustrate, if you see it down in the lower right, the pay jumps, eighth place versus like if he shoves, gets it through even, okay? He's picking up what? He's got six, so he got eight million. Like that puts you in a very different conversation. If you fold, you're very short 
You're you're literally still very short, but there's two much shorter and you're tied. And yeah, it's super wild. Call Oh! <laughs> oh! End of pain! Oh my god! Uh oh! Oh my god! Don't watch the stream over pain. Don't watch it. <laughs> I, I, I. Wow, that's that's tough. I mean, what you, you, what do you what would what would Phil have done? There. I I would have gone out in. Yeah. But I can get behind calling. I okay, pole I would be like, no, oh, bro. But I can get behind calling. And then like maneuver. Yeah, I I, I don't know. I think I would have just shoved, but man, I you look at the pay jumps, you had the one point one million stack. It's so it's so crazy, right? Like it's just such a I mean and, and talk about for touch. That's a big swing for him. He was at 33, 34 million. Now he's up, he's already up to 38, and he's sort of got a license to run right now, right? Like hands like this. Yeah. He's just Yeah, but I, I yeah, like he's gonna open so much. I think you have so much fold equity and, and when he calls you're still in front. Um and uh, if you call in double, you're up for the win here. Yeah, and now he's even yeah here he's he's a flip right and if he and actually he doesn't even really mind in some respects he wants to lose this pot right to keep the guy critically short and just go to town so I think <laughs> yeah. he's sort of indifferent to meanwhile this is a we'll mega sweat it, for we'll Hans. Be, it would be funny if he folds and <laughs> yeah that's actually an interesting debate there um, as it plays out seventy percent favorite sevens can he fade some paint a ten. Queen, Jack, or is it going to brick out? And it is a, there's a, ooh, that looks like a straight for our friend who does get the double there. I mean, at the same token, I guess if you're touch, you want to win, right? You get the chips, you have 40 million. They're still very short stacks. You just kind of always want to win the pots. What? Let me ask you a question from yeah. Game Integrity, Phil. What is out of line? Like in, in that sense, it'd be 100K to win 3.5. Where do you draw the line on like a spot? Because is there situations where you would want to keep a short stack? If you have you ever done that, or is that is that a uh, like where do you cross the line of ethics in that in that sense? I think that's. Um, I think it's not bad ethics to let a guy survive for your own benefit. Like it's bad ethic if, if you work together with him, you know, that's bad ethic. No, I, get I, I, share of course, or... that's what I meant. I, I, I shouldn't say the word ethic. I, I guess etiquette, or I should say, um, it gets a little dicey though, right? Like, cause in that sense, like in a spot where it's closer, you might do it, but what if they're, you know, Hazes and Rudolph, they're from the same country and like, how can you fall? You know, like it starts convoluting, makes things gray. If you, if it's before collusion or for, you know, you could really start to argue that, right? If it's, if it's like for the betterment of yourself, or for yeah, like if you fold this one, it's definitely uh, the alarms are going on. You know, that was too. Right. It's too much. You can you cannot stretch this concept too much. You know, right uh, here it makes no sense. You know, because he's he's strip leader anyways. He can continue on the pressure. You know, it's also something else. Like depends on the chip distribution a lot, and like how many chips are you losing? You know, and this all would like uh, three big clients you know that is not possible you know? that would definitely be over the line you know? yeah oh there it is overpaid gets his tens after all and and look though he does call fold 
to be, you know, again, we saw the hand, right? Seven, eight. What happens when he's got ace, deuce off and he has to call or whatever? And, he, and he, here he has 6.7 million. A player's gone out. He's got two shorter stacks still, and he's sort of right there tied with Geb Geb. So at the same token, seven handed in the game. And, you know, it's not, uh, it's always, again, it's always easier with the cards up. It's, it's just not clear cut on yeah. what the best play is yeah, there. Uh, it's tricky. But somehow get behind the call, like, sure. You know, it's also like if you defend there with normal hands, it's kind of nice to have tens in there to, to defend your range, you know, and, and you can check, let's say the board comes low, the dudes see back for sure, and you can jam all in and pick up some chips without showdown, you know. Yeah, it makes, makes a lot of sense. King Jack suited, powerful hand, force. Alex, very short. Very short. With fours. Tough yeah, spot here, too, with Anatoly Shorter. I mean, got a fold? I would call it here. Just set, set mine here. And the dad's Christmas. Merry effing Christmas. <laughs> That is strong. This reminds me of like one of the biggest pots I ever lost in my life. And th three handed in WPT, I got in King 10 to fours and it came uh, actually Jack nine four, I think. And I lost to King 10. No, no, it was less than that. It was like, it was, it was like whatever four. I flopped a set versus uh, King 10 off and the guy had to hit runner runner and did, but that, that is, you're right. You got to see a flop. Why not? This is, this is, this is actually, this is wild, right? This is a this is a miraculous board. What a what a spot for Kulab here. Kind of interesting. I mean, to just shove or not, there's draws like you, you would have draws like calling is kind of uh, you know, there are scary cards, but more so you just let your opponent pot control. Uh, very interesting. Yeah, very interesting at this. I don't like it too much. Um, it was Jack eight four. That was my flop. King ten off. All in preflop though. Verse four. Sent Jack Jack eight four. That was right. King ten. That hurt. Anyway, yeah, I don't know. Like this, this is a this is interesting. If you, you check raise the flop or check check all in the flop or. Or, oh, it's going in, yeah, pretty dead. Yeah, get it in, in a pretty fantastic spot. I mean, the percentage is runner-runner, 96.46%, and that is not one. That's 100 on the turn for Kulev. That's my guy. That is my guy, one of my picks. He's in there. He's been maneuvering, and, and he is in the mix now, 11.3 million. He is all of a sudden in, what, third? Third place with 11 million right now. Kind of crazy. And again, this has taken a while, two hours, 15 minutes. We're down to seven, but there's a 40 million stack and some really short stacks. So I think we're going to get to see. We're going to get to see a, a, a bit of a show from touch, if you will. I think he's going to, he has a license to put on a lot of pressure, especially with a hand like this. Could he just open jam here? Eight million is 11. Is that too much to risk at this moment, Phil? With the six, two million. No, that's a, that's a, yeah, he's gonna do it. Right, yeah. And he does get the F A7 suited to fold that might reshot him here if he just raises. Yeah, big welcome again to my man Bree Jesh watching. Austin, got some new faces in there today and some familiar ones. We are gonna announce the giveaway when we lose one more player. It's gonna be 50 or $100. Guys with the thumbs up, you're already halfway there on the giveaway. Be giving a keyword to enter. And of course, as I mentioned earlier, the hands up promo, you guys can guess the winning winning hand. And if you guess the exact suits, there's a jackpot progressive bonus that's going on and that has not been hit yet. So you gotta guess the specific suit. That's hard, right? The winning hand for today, it was the nine of spades, nine of hearts, for example, ace of diamonds, ace of, ace of clubs. You gotta, you gotta guess the exact, it's hard, but there's a lot of you out there, a lot of you can guess and we will be giving a giveaway. Phil and I plan for a nice dinner 
And again, Phil was there when I met my wife. There's one person in the world there when I met my wife. This is this man right here. So I got a lot of love for Phil. So we got to do a podcast too. This is fun to do the Super Millions. We'll do a podcast. We're, we, we, I want to hear more about your stable, what you're doing now, and, and diving back into poker. We're going to have to... We'll have to dig- digress. We'll do a do a proper podcast. Have you ever have you done you've done podcasts before? Yeah, I've done some podcasts, but it was funny. You asked me to do a podcast, and then I won the GG Masters. That's true. We did yes. Yeah, so now even more to talk about. Yeah. That that'd be good timing. <laughs> yeah, man. I'm doing a lot of. I, I'm working a lot on the stable uh, these days. You know. Uh, it's very, it's quite small right now, but of course I have big plans. It's kind of like ready, set up, everything goes smooth, and now I can like take on some more players. So we will soon have another round of uh, applications. So if you guys are uh, um, uh, poker players and uh, are interested in that, follow me on, on Instagram. Follow me on Instagram, the real Phil Borg, and we soon have a new round of uh, applications going on, and I will post it there. And then we will teach you some of the secrets. How many how many players do you have in your stable? We have eight now. And I want to do it like, yeah, but long term, I want to focus a lot on like smaller stakes. You know, I will have all the way from, we have right now all the way from $10 to high stakes, you know, but um, long term, I want to focus more on that guy, like who's having a job, but they are thinking about moving into poker and make that shift possible. Yeah, been some cool highlights from these. These are these are fun. This is definitely a this is a I would say I, I, I this is you know there's not bigger tournaments you're gonna find online. 10k buy-in, million dollars plus the first, and this is again every Tuesday on GG big prizes from the Sunday final table play down to the final table, and then we would do the do the commentary next week. Jungle Man will be the guest. Got some other big guests. Antonio Spandiari was on, fellow Burning Man. You know you know Antonio. That is he the one who got? Did he convince you to go to Burning Man, or who convinced you to go? <laughs> uh, um, I don't know, man. That's such a long time ago. But um, yeah, funny you have these kind of guests. I'm very close with Jungle Man. We talk a lot. So you guys tune in next time. It's going to be interesting. And Antonio also, like, super interesting guest, you know. I haven't seen him in, in a long time. Yeah, I just got to spend the week with him in LA. He's got three kids now. I don't know if you know he had a girl as well. He's got two boys and a girl. As we see, Alex is got a does go for it here. A little bit versus under the gun. Hayes has had something to worry about, but he is gonna find a dominating spot versus Anatoly. Ace Queen, Ace Ten, Anatoly needs help. Gonna have to come from behind or chop. Club would make it interesting. Eight, six, Jack. There's cards. Chop out. Hey, you know what they say about chop pots, and this is this is we see it a lot. It's not uncommon. He needs a four, a nine, a 10, and it is not going to be, though, the jack. Not quite enough. And Alex, who is surging there, rocking the Ireland flag. Golfer claps all around. A lot of respect for Antali Filatov, one of the titans of the game. Going to get another nice score, although I know he wanted more. And he did get up to 11 million at one point. As you see, 11 million is a lot. There's not a lot of people with 11 million, even with six players left. There it is, 11 million in GG Poker earnings. He will be our seventh place finisher We're down to six let's cue the, let's cue the giveaway here in a second while wow. five six suited nice nice shove there very aggressive very aggressive and these are huge flips right the pay jump is like probably 60 70 80 thousand and then equity another like two 150 200k in equity so it's like Huge, huge pots.
Yeah, big moments, big pots, big shoves. Got takes a lot of heart to shove blind on blind with six high for, for a real amount of chips as well. King Queen suited, interesting. I would probably call. Yeah, on the button, deep, still in pretty good spot there. I mean, second, really in a 14 million, 15 million, these guys have, uh, you know, good stacks, healthy stacks, everyone else pretty short. Geb Geb, wheels are spinning, just thinking you know, how wide touch is going, but shoving here would be pretty aggressive. I don't think yeah. really much of a consideration. But it depends on the opening range, you know, if he's hitting, opening 80% uh, and then falling like, Ace ten, and it's a good spot. And I like to see that also. Like this is this is new to, this is very new to me uh, since I came back to poker. It's like these block three bets. You know, they 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 are the new trend. And that's why I'm saying like nowadays you have to be a bit more careful with opening too wide as a chip leader because they make this place as a short stack and i think it's a it's a very i think this game uh, this is very profitable play you know by the way so i like gap gaps hard here but his intuition we have to work on it a little bit more because he's running into queen and it's not gonna work <laughs> that, that always shocks me the best players in the game their timing is so impeccable they just like it you know all these i know you know very well bad with it like he just, it seems that like he goes for any time it's like close or something. He just gets it right. He like ate the air ball out of the big blind three bet. Oh, wow. look at that. Wow. This is savage. And he gets the queens to fall. Wow. Whoa. Oh my God. Oh. He, I mean, queens didn't even think that long. I mean, it looks so strong. I mean, Wow. Wow. That was, that was that, you know, talk about highlights. You, you're gonna have to clip that one. That was, that was that no even really decision by it. That was crazy. But look at this. Hey, at the same time though, he's just picking up so many pots. He's got 42 million blinds or 255. No one, he is double second and he's in a really good spot. So, wow. Look at this Geb Geb with less, well, 12 blinds basically. Ace King and Ace Eight. Chris Rudolph could get a really good spot blind on blind if Geb Geb passes it. But threes, six handed, short, one of the shortest. Gonna be hard to get first ins. Pretty close here too. That was sick. Cool lab, man. Glad he's on my team. That was that was nice. All right, well, so Chris, Touch also gonna get saved here. And if you're Chris, it's actually you know, but it, it makes sense, you know, because Ace King is shoving, like you know, Ace King Jax is is shoving. So basically, wow. you have to give Alex like a block here. Oh, it's going in. Big, Not big, bad. big I'm spot. Ace King to three, seventy percent threes after that flop. Heart for a sweat. The pause, the long pause turn. Not not usually a little. And we got a river Ace or King only now. Pretty good spot. Can. Someone from Austria going to win the pot. It's, ooh, oh, it looked like an ace, but it is a deuce. And Chris Rudolph is going to be on the super, super short stack now. What a what a moment. Three is going to hold up. Ace eight would have knocked him out too. Blind on blind probably was calling. So if there's any any uh, positive spin on that, Chris Rudolph, if threes fold, he would have been out, I think. Would have gone shove call. So, you know, he's still in. Very short, two blinds, chip in a chair. Yeah, and everybody's back to the ICM prison. Yeah, Haas is, has an interesting spot as well, knowing that, right? If he raises and Chris folds, he's <laughs> put in a tough spot too. Come on, do it. Nah. <laughs> Can you guys hear that in the background or no? You hear my my boy, he was getting a little, son was knocking, he was a little, a little upset, but he'll be okay. 
not quite ready for the Super Millions action yet. He's uh, he's a little young, but we're we're here. He knows I'm here, and he's trying to get in. But what about you, Phil? What how many you kids? You like you want to have kids, or you want to have? What's your number of kids you'd like to have? I know you like kids, right? I have I have one already. One, yeah. And uh, it's gonna be two or three. It's a good number. Two seems good. Pairs are nice, man. Pairs are nice. Let's see. What about you? Uh, I will have two. Well, well, second on the way, and I don't know. Two. I think two will be good, but we'll see. See. See how it goes. I love kids. I'm happy to be happy to have more. So uh, it's a, it's not it's it's a lot, but it's also you know it's worth it. It's amazing, amazing experience. Three is not gonna play that time. Geb Geb gonna leave it down. He's gonna lay it down. And we are still six handed. We will provide the giveaway keywords coming up here. 200 plus have hit the thumbs up. Appreciate you guys. Let us know where you're watching from. Alex Kulik with the play of the night. Very powerful. That was, and, uh... and, yeah, and this is really a trend of the new final table strategy. This small, these three bets from short stacks. And Alex Kulev knew this and he was going for it. And overpaid is the sh well similar actually this is almost like <laughs> he's in it again <laughs> oh my he's god almost now we're having another three minute tank coming in he he's gonna almost play it the same right call maybe and see if he hits an ace or a queen but you just like are a, you now know? oh yes the balance is range and now it's gonna come like now it's gonna come like eight eight nine three Can any uh, ICM pro in the chat, some high stakes pro, I know some of my friends are watching, see something spot, and he had basically tens in the same, in the same spot here. And he just called. No, before he had 12 big lines with the tens, that's different. Now he, his fold equity really goes down, but he does still have a bunch of fold equity. So I would just I would have shot definitely the tens and I would show the ace queen here also just for the record. But ICM freaks, can you tell me like please something? Yeah, I'm, I'm wondering why it's taking so long, though. I mean, it's just thinking about all the different boards or thinking, trying to figure out what, <laughs> like, why, what, yeah. you know, why take so long now? Why not, like, see the... Yeah, and he, he and he had to, he could figure it out the last time he had already three minutes to figure it out, you know, so... Ace, queen, this hand, I, I just don't see this going well for him. I, Ace, queen, I this hand to me is the most, it's just the most difficult... This one is more difficult than a tens. Yeah, I, I, I'm for sure. I played a lot of sit and goes, you know. So I've studied ICM quite a bunch, like a long time ago. But it's it's there's very rarely you have these super short stack scenarios. And this time he shows. <laughs> this was only because of the last time it went wrong. <laughs> Oh, uh, people are accusing he might use some software here. Hmm. I don't know. He might just think it through or not.
Yeah, I mean, yeah, tough spot. Tough spot. I mean, look at Chris Rudolph all in. Basically in the big blind here. Queen nine off. Jack nine for touch. And let's see. He's just I think he's deciding. He's got no fold equity. He could just have the best hand. There's extra money in the middle. Is gonna raise. Figure out no one else really can get involved here. Without a strong hand. is thinking about it is there some extra meat on the bone here to get creative to play to flat to raise could he make it but that does he really want to raise give chris three to one give him give him a price on his money price out and give him a chance to get get in it so i, I don't know ace three off though he's, he's he's thinking thinking what to do a lot of decisions right now a lot going on these chess clocks getting a little shorter. Kulap three three minutes thirty seven. Touch has three and eleven. So yeah. last three minute clocks. We have seen some clock situations come into play. Um, you know, I was very much out of time in uh, my final table, like halfway in already, and my opponent as well in the heads up. So um, I'm looking forward. It's very fast action, much faster than this here. Because I busted everybody with a time bank and then I have no time bank, so. <laughs> what is he thinking here? I don't know, like three bad, the death. I mean, do you think there's some think... gamesmanship to the to the time bank? Is it like actually thinking or do you think that like it's part of the like the, 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 the game? I had a friend of mine one of my very close friends, it was, uh, you might've played with him, Bill Chapel, Begs Clutch back in the day on line. He'd do a lot of time bank stuff, even just spots where he knew what he was doing just to kind of like meta it, but I don't know. I think he was really considering getting cute there. Queen nine, Jack nine, as it stands, Queen nine, 86% to double up here. Keep us, ooh, sweaty card. Little extra additional situation of opportunity for touch as we will see a river peel off here where we remain six or get to five and activate a giveaway. And it is going to be a queen high double up for Chris Rudolph. I, I feel like he's one of those guys that just never, he's never out, right? <laughs> like he's just like, here he goes, gets the double. He's going to get through the blinds, it, you know, put people in a tough spot where there's like a, someone, you know, make someone put it at risk with the modest hand. And, you know, he just got the six high is going to fold. So here you go. He has the button through the blinds, got the double up and hold. It's amazing to even get the best hand, right? At that, to be all in in the big blind and be have the best hand and hold is 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 a lot. But now he's got three blinds, and there are six left. Ooh, yeah, queens raise a six two three bet. Also, king jack suited. That's one of those solver type ones that you can just get aggressive with, right? Especially in a spot like this. This could be it. He might rip it. He might really put the pressure on, right? King Jack suited might just go for it. Nah. Nah. No. Against like a three bet. Maybe like, ah, maybe against the open race. The open, the open. I mean, I'll say this. Hazes is definitely taking multiple opportunities for light raises. So yeah, maybe he's, and also I'll say, I'll say this, Alex Kulev, plays a lot of pots he opens wide he's anytime there's a possible open he's going for it so man, i think this could just this could go yeah, I mean, there, I, there's, you might go if for it. Is bold, uh, uh, touch my jam huh? yeah not not bad probably not bad he could also call you know i would probably just call and and he has to check so much we could three bet also. Put the guy in a box. All options are okay in my opinion. Hold is not okay. Okay. Yeah. Sure. Ooh. Ooh, ooh. Oh, fireworks. We got a pot.
Yeah, and check rates are in on the turn. Man, this is. I mean, if you're Alex, like the crazy thing is, there's so many like you have like a check mark on this hand so often, right? You're against Ace Jack off. You're against the uh, whatever Ace Ten suited. You're against some sort of thing, but the King Jack or Jack Ten of clubs that's the one you don't want to see right and then your opponent who covers you is got the hand this is this could be a this could be a banger right here this is okay well if you're alex you got the nuts you got six million in the middle you get called. You don't block the ace. What do you like sizing here, Phil? I would go quite quite on the bigger size. Uh, I would go bigger. For 4.8. To not get to get still value from my ace x that they can't forward really. But Alex, yeah, touch is touch is interesting. You know, if he tries to jam here and get to fold like an ace, or pause because he has also showdown value, and you know, this is more tricky for me with the ICM. I think he will call. 4.5. He's got a got a hammer lock. Like on the, on the turn. You know, if you're down here for his king, that's probably folding, you know? And that's a huge part huge part of the other guy's range is ace king, ace jack. Which you're also blocking a bit. So I would call here yeah, and you're still good against 10 Jack. Wow. All you call. Wow. Steps into it. Needs a 10 or a club. Otherwise, 20, 80, almost 80% 80 of the time, we're going to have a new chip leader. Big moment. The slow peel. Gotta love the feature. Clean as a whistle. <laughs> Alex Kulev is on his way. He has got 38 million and touch still still healthy 22 million but wow what what a moment there 284 for our seventh place finisher anatolic Filatov. your once chip leader out in eight for 219,000. andres nemeth andres goes out early there in ninth 169 of course 1.35 1 million upper grabs no deal making available in this format we will get that giveaway on the screen if you want to do the first part hit the thumbs up we appreciate you almost 3,000 people tuned in today i'm your host jeff gross join by Philip Grusom, the legend, the online and live legend, does it all. And here he is, Phil Bort, goes by that moniker online. You may have seen him at your tables, and he is calling the action and fresh off his 800K from 165, 150 or whatever it was, dollar buy-in. One, one shell, 66,000 entrance, no big deal. MGG took it down. He is... Alex Kulev. I, let, I want to see that guy. We have to say, like, he also made the play of the night, you know? And then he got lucky here, like it's uh, kind of a setup. So uh, that's this this uh, saying, right? Uh, destiny favors the brave. Huh? So True. Alex Kulov is very hot right now. On fire, actually. A little indication around his name. I'm gonna remind you from March 5th to the 28th, there is a hundred million dollar guaranteed going on. That is what we are in event number 12. And there is 18 events. The main event on March 27th as a $500 buy-in. Hope we get to the final table. See some of you in the audience here. There. <laughs> very young guy. Very interesting guy. I'm seeing it. Oh, it's all in again. Oh, all in. Nine seven to Kings. 30 million up for grabs here. We saw the the, the jam, and it is a nine or a seven needed. 80. A big moment for Haas's for the chip lead. And it is it is a hold. It is a double up there. Kulev went for absolute. We just went for blades of glory. 
putting pressure, knowing Chris is short. The pay jumps are real. 9 7 suit is going to play well against most hands, not against Kings. Did flop equity, though. And chips getting distributed, Phil. I thought maybe we were going to get get our dinner reservations. Things could just be a blowout and just shove. But now we've got three big stacks, the one short stack. Hope you're enjoying at home. Yeah, crazy flips here. Yes. Every time, like 400,000. This, this, this uh, seven on the river here is, uh, would be hard to digest. All right, well, four, five, Jack Deuce, five high, five high versus Jack High. Can Rudolph do it again? Clean turn, Jack High looking pretty sharp. Got to fade to six, six outs, and he does it. Jack High plays. Jack High. For... <laughs> yeah. Alex Kule, very young guy, by the way. He looks very young here. <clears throat> he got the heart. Now he. First time, uh, first time as a chip leader with the with the playable hand. I would definitely play this hand. I would probably play it as a call. Or not three, but it's fine too. You know, I I think people exploit a lot, like the ICM, like pre flop, you know, and. and People don't try to exploit it so much like post flop. You know, five six. The problem is like you don't get to show down with your pair of five and pair of six. But in this constellation, you really do get to show down a lot of your one pair hands. You know. Yeah. Yeah. No, it's fun. I think you know these are guys that are playing. They play poker. They're aggressive. They know how to play. And there's gonna be some some action here, but there's a, just a shove, touch, not mess around. That's a big, that's a statement shove with the two short stacks. I mean, you're gonna gonna get a lot of good hands to fold there, but Ace King, a, a worthy opponent, worthy worthy hand to, to risk it all with. And we are seeing four of six players fill Austria bearing flags right now, and they got <laughs> they got a lot of chips. The the boys there. Austria is taking over. <clears throat> <laughs> Yeah, they're looking in powerful position. If Alex Kulev doing his best to represent Ireland and take it down. Overpaid, hanging on five mil. Rudolph, like I said, the guy's a fighter. He just there he is, Jack High, blind on blind, good. Gets it in good. He's just getting it in good. He's fighting. He's he's be, he's bobbing. He's weaving. Six hundred k. He can take the blinds again. Yeah, no and he has no, and you have no expectations anymore. Two big blinds. It's like free free rolling here for a million dollar I gotta go on short break I don't know if you're yeah I'm you know you gotta get a decatheter you gotta have a you gotta have your thing ready to go and not, not and you think it. I should we'll, have a reload we might be over by the time you're back. I'm feeling like a four way all in, but yeah, hurry. We're here. We got it covered. We got a great audience and we're having fun. Super, super millions. Super millions, special edition, event number 12, WSOP spring circuit ring available. Who's gonna win? Who is gonna win? Who's taking this down tonight? Who's feeling good? This is this has been fun to watch, and it is getting getting into that. I will say though, I thought we we're gonna have a separation run over, and we got the dynamic where it could be some play because again, forty blinds effective at twenty four mil. Hazes and Alex hovering around there, and then we got the couple short stacks, so we got some poker left. Mm. 
We got some poker left. That's for sure. We have got some poker left. We are making moves. We are in a nice... We, are, we, got, we got some play. We got some play here. Jack-9 does fold. Some players would elect to call, I guess, with the overpaid also being that short. Just kind of have to jockey. He's, he's technically, you know, overpaid hits the blind before him with their stack size is at risk. So he's sort of the move is on him. That's a good rule of thumb. If you are not the not on the chopping block, overpaid is going to be hit blind, blind. They'll kind of rotate through, and hopefully, you know, he finds a spot to go through and get it in. Overpaid in, in tricky waters here. 8-3, eight, eight, ace-10. Asking for a one-time. It's definitely 1.3 million up top. Could use a one-time, although Chris Rudolph does find his way to big pound tables frequently, so I don't know if he wants to use it one time here. May get some bigger stages. This is about as big as it comes. Uh, we got some Chris Rudolph fans for sure. Very tough player. And we are going to get Phil Grissom back in a few. Queen 10 suited, 3 7 suited, 5 flat. We see a pretty nice flopper queen 10 suited top pair queen high flush draw fives in trouble has two pure outs players mixed strategy here to check back or bet small say 25 mil deep both players you know it's not not in jeopardy to get check check raised huge so i don't know maybe he tries to fold out some hands like ace four suited or whatever just some some hands also checking back seems reasonable Ten suited now decides to do the betting doesn't want to give free cards right also just assume has the best hand there's diamonds there's also straight draws all over the place so he does come from a two-third size see how Hodges responds to that Yeah, it's been fun. Some great highlights on GG's channel from these. Also on my personal YouTube, Jeff Rose Poker. You guys can watch over the course. Done a lot. Done a lot. Close to 40 episodes. Really have a blast. Have a great time. Such a receptive audience. And I love, love to do these shows. So I appreciate you guys being here. I will announce the giveaway as soon as we lose one more player. Again. And um, yeah, it's been, been, a, been a pleasure to, to do this final table with you today. three suited and queen jack the battle of short stacks very very interesting spot i mean again kind of not wanting to be the one all in at the same time like you're just dominated you're actually ahead in this spot there's a very few hands you're going to think that a player on this stack depth is going to be min raising that you're actually ahead of you're also if you miss you know now you're, you're even way shorter if you if you flop a king are you good what boards do you get to go with at the same time the price is so attractive and you're sort of got to get going so um overpaid also has been been some weird spots with premium hands
I would love to talk to Phil about this one. I, I would, my instinct would say call. Call, right? You see a flop. It's for the right price. There are flops you go with. You do run the risk of being cooler outplayed. Um, you're also just so short. Like how 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 picky can you be? To, to you got a king three suited, six handed closing to action. It's hard to get to board to flops or be be all in. And I, I imagine call is the right play. It's taking a long time. Bit bit wild actually. But, you know, listen, to be fair, every player gets 15 minutes to get a chess clock. It is for a lot of money. It's a big decision to call. Maybe just RNG in it, right? The random number generator. He does fold, though, ultimately. And a big, big pickup for Chris Rudolph. Now, he is not the shortest stack by a decent margin. The blind up. Maybe it could be about the, the blinds going up. But I don't know. That wouldn't make sense. I guess in theory it would weigh longer. Or it was by hand. That's it. It's by hand anyway, not by time. So you can see him upper left level. 21 in 20 hands so that doesn't make a difference and here he goes ace 10 gets to get a good spot although it's not blind on blind it is one of the chip leaders raising gotta believe this is gotta be good enough but no fold equity either so not not a not a clear 100 million percent jam but i just don't think you can get you're not gonna get a lot better than this where the chip leader is gonna be wide you're probably gonna have the best hand can be dominating overpaid Getting put in a lot of a lot of tough spots. He's had a hard time in spots of what to do here. He shoves, king on suited, likes it enough. And these are tough to win. 7.8 million. And there's a matchup on there. Results overpaid. Just touch some grass all in. And diamond and a queen spreads behind it. Gut shot available. King. Needs a king. Oh, actually, I'm sorry. He needs an ace or a 10. A king would make a straight. It is slow peel. Drum roll. Drum roll. It looks like possibly an ace. It's not. It's a deuce overpaid out. GG. Golfer claps all around. And we are four or five Austrian players in a big super line. It's pretty crazy. It was, it was pretty crazy. Pretty crazy GG five left. Let's get that you let's get that giveaway going, guys. Hit the thumbs up and then the it'll be GG space. This is gonna be the, the, the user the, the giveaway. GG billboards. And then enter your username on GG poker. If you don't have a GG poker username, gift it to a friend. Ask a friend who's out of the country. If you're in a US in a place you can't play GG with the real username. Gift it, give it, split it. Say, hey, I'll give you the three roll, fifty or hundred dollars, whatever it is. I'll split it with you, and we can go 50-50. How about that? That seems, you know, something like that. That might be an offer or gift it, whatever you want to do. Um, all right, putting that in the GG comments. That's it. GG, billboard, GG space, billboard space. Uh, you are using it. That's it. That's it. Nine, ten, eight, six. So G we got a giveaway going here, Phil Bort. We got a giveaway, fifty or hundred dollars. That is now activated. We're down to five. Queen nine suited took out ace ten from our man, and we are down to. If you see in the chat, you got to type GG space your u space Phil Bort space your username. And I'm gonna stop this in a little bit. We're gonna do a hard pause here. So get it in. Agreed. It could get a little annoying. Five minutes you guys got. Jack, you're doing a great job with this commentary. Phil, you make it easy. I don't have to think much about the poker. I get, I get to just, you know, I get to just sit back, ask you, what would you do? WWPD. What would Phil Board do? That's that's not a that's not a that's a, that's an easy way to live on the commentary streets right here. All right, let's let's get into some strategy. Like, let's let's learn a little bit something. <clears throat> you see your name in the chat, Phil Bort. That's the giveaway. GG space Phil Bort space username. And we got got to hit the thumbs up. Hit the thumbs up to enter with that, and that's it. Got to be eligible. Two hundred forty-five out of twenty-five hundred. We're less than ten percent, guys. Let's. Just put more respect on the show for Phil for 
for for the for GG for the WSLP circuit ring for the 1.3 million. If you like any of that, hit the thumbs up. If you're having a good day, hit the thumbs up. If you want to have a good day, then let's just. I mean, it's, it, the fact there's not 2,000 thumbs up is wild to me right now. There's 2,500 on me. I, I'm expecting 80, percent but we'll see. Just we'll see what happens. Yeah, I, I find it cool, you know, Jack. When we played this uh, high rollers back in the days, you know, like it, it was really something special. Like one, like once in a while there was a high roller tournament going on, you know. And nowadays it's just huge. Like you know these prize pools and and um, poker is kind of on a new rise, huh? Yeah, it's, 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 it is, right? Yeah, Aria, they're spreading 25Ks like they're, you know, it's, it's, it's like they're 500s <laughs> online. Like, they're just like, oh, it's 25. They say it's a 50K, there's a 300K, 500K. It's just, it's just chaos. It's absolutely nonstop high rollers. That, that earnings now, 50 million people are crossing. It's really, really wild. I think you have like 11 million in earnings and yeah. Yeah, you know, and it's like back in the days it was a lot, you know, and nowadays it's just like so many tournaments that, that people get there quite fast and surpass me quite fast. But it's it's like a good sign, you know, like poker is on a rise, the top players making more money, but also more, more people uh, live from it which I find like super cool, you know, like getting out of this nine to five living and into a poker life. is like one of the things I like to promote and I like to make it possible also for more people. And it's, in my opinion, it's not more difficult than back in the days, you know, it's the level of play is obviously higher but still, if you put in time, you can make a living out of poker, no matter who you are. And that's the cool thing about poker, like everybody can make, a, can make it. It's not like you need to have, because everybody has some strength, right? As we said before, some have a better intuition, some have a better mathematical brain, you know? And you can make it with both ways. If you try to learn the other side, right? Like, the intuitive guys have a bit of a problem to learn the strategy, which is kind of boring a bit, you know, and the strategy guys have a bit of a problem accessing intuition and learning about that. And if, if you're willing to learn the other side, you, you can make it for sure, you know. And don't get, you know, we're watching now like top players, you know, this is a 10K and the final table, you know, but if you stay within your range and you don't get like, you know, over, over, if you don't, uh, how do you say it? Like, if you're not overconfident and you're playing above your limits, you know, like, you know, you can make some money on the side and become better and then, improve like slowly you know and i think jack was really like good at that like not overestimating himself you know like you, you just gotta know your limits you know and uh, i always give you zero my friend victor as an example you know he was the, the he was the fifth best player in every game there was which is a, an amazing kind of achievement who is that over uh, Isildur, Victor Blom, he was like the fifth best player in every game there was. And he only played the four best other players, you know, that were better than him, you know, and that really crushed him, you know. Yeah. And so it shows it's more important that you have some self-awareness, you know, and like some kind of limits than being actually a, a, a great player, you know. Oh, ace, queen, king, queen. And, and look, the stacks, I mean, Chris has hung around here. So he's still five-handed. I'm gonna Once we go to four-handed, guys, you can stop typing in the giveaway. Once we get to four, I will, that giveaway will end for the time being. And you will have no need to type it in. So type it once and you're good. Yeah, it, it's nice if you have a sweat here, guys. <laughs> Make some bets with each other. 
<laughs> yeah, I'm trying to see who, who the audience has for the $100. I think we gave Chris Rudolph, uh, I believe Alex Kulev. And, you know, I'm going to give him the chip leader. Just I'm going to give him the three. I think I, I think I got – we'll give him touch as well. I, got, I forget who I said for the 100 It's going to be 50 or 100 and that is going to be a shot for a hundred dollar. I might if we get to if we get to six hundred thumb. No, I'll say five hundred. Five hundred thumbs up. I'm just going to automatically make it a hundred dollar giveaway anyway for the sweat. I'm just gonna make it a hundred. A hundred is nicer to give away than fifty. It just feels better. But let's see. I like them. I like when there's some participation. I mean, how how hard you're at your couch. You're on. Your, I mean, wait. So you say where, where are you that you can't hit the thumbs up? Right. It's like you're on your phone watching it there. You got your computer, you click the mouse. I mean, Phil, have you even hit the thumbs up? Maybe you haven't hit it because you're at your computer. I, have, I, I just <laughs> did it. <laughs> okay. Okay. But that's my point. If me and you aren't hitting it, who's hitting it? So we got to practice what we preach. But we got, we got some, we got some great, we got some great, uh, great members today watching on here. Ace Queen going to pick that up. King Queen, no contest. Ace on the turn takes it down. Hazes. Hazes just seems sturdy to me today. He seems hunkered in. <laughs> He's got a plan. He's sort of just in there. He's been aggressive early. Kind of just doing his thing. Twenty three million. I feel like he's my pick today that, that can win. Obviously, we're we're far along in the final table. There's five left. Things have sort of transpired and turned out, and he's in a position to win. But I just feel like he's he just seems really in the zone on on every little decision and play. But uh, a lot of players have played well today. I would say as well. So it's kind of still too yeah. early to. to I say Hazes one. Hazes one. Two left. Two. And then I don't know. Kulev is gonna make it in heads up too. Jeff, you wanna put some more money? Like a little one K bet from now? Picking two, one uh, one guy is out. Chris Rudolph, I guess, is a. Uh, if you don't want to take him, if you want to take him. <laughs> what do you want to bet? Uh, we pick two. Oh, like, but would it be a draft, a red or black, and we we draft? Yeah, again? same, same, same. Yeah, we can bet a thousand. Okay, okay. So All right, I'll let you choose. Red flop. Red flop. All right, G G on it. I like. I get a little. And now it's coming. Oh, undiable, Mister Undiable. It's black. That's big. So I got the flop. That's a good start. Ace five, King three, Ace five, eighty, something big percent six. Can he hold? Can he do it? Do we see a knockout? It looks clean, and that is G G's. And I get the first pick. So how? So now that we'll get two and two, right? This is, wow. Yeah. Wow. That's a big, a big moment. I'll take Peach for 40 mil. Yeah. <laughs> Jack, I'm not trusting your intuition. Like, hey, hey, this is going to win it. Love you. I love you. I can't come enough, my man. All right. So who you got? Who did you, who did you pick? Hazes? Hazes. Hazes? I got Kulev. Kulev in touch. I got 60 million to 30 million for a thousand. Feels right. <laughs> wow. I believe in hate. I have I believe in Hazes. I have also some more information, by the way. Uh, touch and uh, hey touch and hazes, they're good players. Very, very good players. Gap gap but probably two. You know what? I'm feeling generous, audience. Because of my chip position, sixty to thirty million, I'm gonna give I'm gonna give five hundred dollars away to the audience if I'm able to hold on. I mean it's a two to one chip lead in the chips. Anything could happen, so audience, I'm giving you five hundred <laughs> no. on my thousand if I win. You can't buy the audience. I'm gonna do you it. You can't buy the audience. It's gonna be a tweet for next week's show. And uh, I'll tag Phil Bort in the tweet and thank him for the for the bet and the opportunity. And then I'll next week's show when we go live before we'll, we'll put a five hundred dollar retweet on it just for fun. Let's do that. That feels feels good. That feels right. I think right. Like let's let's do. Sorry, oh, actually, Chad. I'm sorry, Chad. We could. I feel like I want to. I want to reward. Uh, 
I, I want to reward the people here today. Maybe it'll be the tweet from today. That feels right too, right? Because maybe it should just be that tweet. But Phil, I'm I'm getting a little cocky. There's a lot of poker left. Haas is already up to 30 million. You got 40 of, of what? 57. I mean, that's pretty. You got actually no. You got yeah. You got four. It's not. It's not that big a lead, really. It's really not. It's really tight. This is yeah. intense. So that's would be so nice to have there. some betting available on the website. It would be so nice if, if it would be possible to bet ICM value bet kind of. If we lose a player, did I say we're gonna stop the giveaway. We're gonna. You can. You guys can stop the. GG space billboard space username for now. We're down to at three handed. It's over. I'm gonna actually. I'm just gonna end it at three handed for 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 the people typing it in. So you guys can type it. I don't want it just to be this the whole time, but you know that's that's how we do the giveaway. It's gonna be 150 or 100, and Phil and I got a nice little side action and a dinner, a thousand plus dinner. On wait, do we have the same people anyway though? So are you double down on Hazes? I double down on Hazes. Yeah, and I got Kulev, and I think we each have the same guys anyway. Nice. Okay, double down. Yeah, a little bit more. But now the whole chat is rooting against me. Like, that's tough. That is. Tough. <laughs> I, I give a thousand. I give a thousand away. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, sorry, Chad. Hey, this is too hot today. Well, let me find this. Uh... All right, I'm gonna. If, well, it's not guaranteed, but that it is my pin tweet. If you got that, will be the tweet you need to retweet. If that, if I were to win, it'll be a five hundred dollar giveaway. I'll pick someone who retweets and comments there. So you need to retweet, like, and comment on uh, the, the 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 pin tweet on Twitter. Five hundred bucks. You guys got an okay chance it's gonna win. I'll, I'll even. There it is. Giveaway. We'll get a little value. Oh, looking good. Check, check. And guys, please ask some questions. And that comes up. I'm monitoring the chat now. And we'll answer any question truthfully. All right, I just put it there. There it is. If you, I, it's better this way, right? If you're watching live, you are eligible for the 500. I don't want to like do next week's tweet randomly, whatever. So if you're watching, you got Twitter. That's where the 500 is. So good luck. It's not, it's not even a really $500 giveaway, right? Because because it's not over. It's probably worth like two, like three, three hundred something dollars on EV. Good luck, everybody. Either way, let's have some fun. Let's see who's gonna be get this title. Event number twelve. See some of you already retweeting, liking. There we go. Get in there. Comment, my man. We got, we got, we've had a special show today. Some big hands. Austria, three of four remaining. Alex, though, fighting hard. Little side action here. And we are we are four handed. Nine. It's taken a while. This has been. Let's see. Two. Four, I mean, we are over three hours, Phil. This is one of the records. I think it will be, as there's still some play. But as expected, I guess a special edition, 10k, almost a thousand runners, stacks a little deeper structure. It's just made for a, for a big one. We were we were. It was made to be a big. Uh... This is an interesting spot for Hayes also. <clears throat> Wonder how he plays that. 35 big blinds. He's gonna have a true red call, yeah. But just jam it, you know, but.
Ooh. Things are turning. Thousand is looking dicey. Every hand is important. Jack six, King Jack out flopped. Jack's back, 1.7 in the middle. And no real money getting put in here. Oh, he did not bet the turn. I would have bet the turn to Jack Six for sure. <clears throat> yeah, uh, I would have made. Yeah, interesting now bets. Seven rolls off, queen rolls off, but does decide to bet now. And uh, yeah, ace high, king high. It's definitely considerations, but. Yeah, tough spot here with the king jack. Ace high is not gonna bet, so you do have a bluff catcher. You're blocking the king queen, which is Really big part of the range, maybe Queen Jack even. And um, yeah, but Hazes needs to have a bluff first, and it's, it's quite tough. Which which hand would bluff now? Like nine, ten? Mm, Haas is bet Haas turn is probably. Haas is got him. I don't like the call also. It's very hard to bluff. Hey, we got some questions coming in here. Get them in. Get the questions in while we can. If we get to 500, there's going to be a $100 giveaway automatically. Come on, touch. I got my rooting interest. We got some. We got a little sweat here, and we are going to play to the winner. As always, this is a Tuesday final table from the Sunday action, and we are now four-handed payout to lower right, 1.35, 1 million to first. Somebody is asking. Uh, Mr. Kumar is asking, what's your advice for people playing live tournaments, average buy-in 200 to 800? I don't play full time. My advice would be play some online too. Um, you know, life is of course much softer, but online you really learn much quicker, much faster, more games, more hands and so on. And, you know, then it becomes your edge in the live games becomes much bigger and um, it's more fun also when, when you own, when you, when you become a better player. But be, uh, be aware, if you can play 200 to 800 live, you can play a tenth of that online. So 20 to $80 will be your level, right? Do not play like the same stakes online, then you're going to get killed. But you can play more tables, you know, and... Look at this from Alex. Decides to take the gut shot on the flop and put the pressure two-thirds coming here and putting a lot of pressure on a three or a seven even. Nicely done. Blinds are up, 400, 800K. Three hours, 15 minutes approaching here. I would say there's been a very strong brand of poker played today. We've seen a lot of great play, a lot of heart, a lot of effort. And look at this. You might see some consolidation here, Phil, two of your guys. You got eight no. queens. Give it all to Hazes. He's my man anyway. Yeah, this is going in, guys. Strong intuition. <laughs> The good news, I guess for you, it's the chips aren't changing in a way. Do you want 20 and 20 or do you want Haas's to drive the ship with 40? I mean, ace I take I take Hazes to drive the ship. Well, eights needs a diamond or a eight or else. Actually, a 10, right? Is that right? A 10 would be a straight and he is going to... It's a diamond. <laughs> it is a diamond. Haas's gets a leg chopped off, but... 
I don't know. I don't think that's as bad as you think. I guess it's just you're ba- banking on Haas' ability, but at the same time, like, it's 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 forty to fifty-one million and very even. Wow, Phil, this might be a record stream. I mean, there's four guys with twenty mil right now playing for a lot of money, guaranteed a, a big payout here. And I don't know, man. We might we're gonna see some poker here. Yeah, I guess I should buy another bottle of wine or something. Huh? <laughs> yeah, and that that five hundred dollar giveaway. We'll let that marinate over on the pin Twitter tweet Jeff Gross Poker. If you guys want to retweet, comment, put your YouTube username. That will be given away if I in to win the my bet against Bill. A little friendly wager, a little extra action for you guys. Every week we do put up a tweet there. I may have started doing a giveaway at the start of the show for you guys, get you engaged. Everybody, who doesn't like a giveaway? I mean, what, what's wrong? Just, you can't not enjoy free opportunity at something. King five suited, five nine off. He's limping like five nine off suit in that, in that spot. He's also coming to play. I think it's good because the big plan checks so much because of the ICM consideration. We will have some more action here. That call. Yeah, a lot of notable hands today. Really, really going to be, it's fun one to kind of look back on and check out and see. And here we go, king five suited, five nine. Going to call, has the best hand, but five nine. Does he get to bluff here? Doesn't have a heart. He has a five, so does, so does good Alex. Candidate. Very, very good candidate to bluff. Let's see if he can pull the trigger and be successful. But Alex could have has surprised us. So, but this is too much to ask from Alex. Nice bluff. Nice hand. Nice hand. Got to give credit. And we are very even. Very even. 52 40. Ace 8 suited. Deuces. Oh. Great timing here, because if he raises, Hayes is going to show up and take out the pot. We got some more questions here coming in. <laughs> Yeah, how fast answer. how fast the line's going up 15 minute level this year right i wanted to know thank you uh Ajit. i wanted to know what your longest dancing was and how you handled it it was extremely long and extremely painful and I don't think I handled it that well at the time. Uh-oh. Geb Geb could get into a bit of trouble here. Ace, eight off, small blind, big blind, four-handed. I'm sorry, small blind button versus the chip leader. This could be a yeah. five, six mil. Definite. I think he's going to re-raise, yes. Spot is good, hand is good. Timing, not so good. Intuition score, attribute. <laughs> Not 100 here, but touch, just touch, just rip it, right? Nine's a tri- bit tricky to play. It's a pretty big hand, has fold equity. Yeah, stuff it in. Geb Geb, going to lose a leg there. Gets about a quarter of a stack out the door. $500 giveaway stronger for the crew. And we are in a, ooh, ooh. 
Pauses. Oh, this could be problematic. King 10, 20 bigs. Is this a is this the king ten off? Is this a chance for just a limp jam or no? Twenty blinds. What's he got? Twenty king ten off suit. And folds. I think it's one of these spots again where you want to put control and keep weak hands in. In one sec. You know, where you don't want to jam and only get called by really strong hands. You want to keep in all the trash. You can call on most flops again, like. Many, many flops you can call again. So I think I, limp, I like the limp call. I think we're going to set a record together here, my friend. This could be a record show. I think three, and we're coming in three hours, 20 minutes. This is definitely got. Yeah, the plan was to uh, watch my final table. Huh? I, I guess we're not going to get to that anymore. Huh? It, hey, I mean, look, it's it's a yeah, certain time. It's a, it's a lot of. A lot of, lot of studying, lot to review. This is definitely an honest day's work right here. Three hours and 20 minutes plus at the moment. Appreciate everyone in here. We've got giveaways for you and other possible giveaways. Of course, that hands up still also available if you guys entered in what you think the winning hand will be. Jackpot available. And uh, here we are seeing four-handed play. Four-handed versus some of the greats and my friend here touch thinking about deuces what he could do oh touch wow i would never i would always jam this you would what would with the deuces yeah you would jam there yeah like 15 big blinds super icm spot alex Kulov has shown to open like still open If I double him, I still should stay in the Jubilee, like, loses, have equity. Touch also gets three percent, minus three points on his timing. Yeah, I'm, I, I'm, I'm, I've, I've honestly said there's been some of the most exciting just in general hands and stuff I've seen. There's been today that Queen King suited hand was, was strong. That was, that was like a very, very cool hand. That was by Alex as well. Um, and here he is going for it again. My, he's guy's got, he's got moxie. He's got heart. He goes for it, mm -hmm. takes the spots, puts on pressure, opens light. He goes for it. But this time, I, I don't see him bluffing here with the sand. Yeah. All right. Well, 48. The rich get a little richer. And right now, Austria, one, two, three with four remaining. 10 million for Alex Kulev. And it is a. Look at that. No one with anything here. Seven deuce off. Get get a walk with seven deuce off. That's living pretty clean. Queen deuce, queen seven, nine four. Nine four not going to play. Up to 49.3 million, almost 50 million with the remaining chips in play at, what, 35, 45. So over half the chips in play, four-handed. Yeah, Jeff, what do you say for somebody's asking for downswing advice? How you, how, how you do, do you, what's a good advice for downswing? I mean, look, the, the downswing is very tricky. It's, it's one of those things where it's very important to understand if you're playing well, if you're not playing well. I think that the most 
obvious thing is to take a step back, take down your volume. If you're playing, probably playing too many tables, if you're playing four, six, eight tables, try two, you know, drop the stakes a little, talk to people, review. I think you just got to slow down, right? Like, um, you know, the, uh, yeah, just take, take, like when you're hot, you know, go for it. When you're slow, when it's not going well, you got it. You can't, you're making a big mistake if you're forcing playing bigger, chasing, playing longer hours. Right. So like, I think the first thing to do is take a reset, relax, get a game plan, reassess your bankroll, reassess what you're doing, your habits, you know, your sleep, your schedule, and, and then kind of go from there. I think that's the, the, the most, the hardest thing is to just to, to stabilize, to reset and yeah. realize what you're doing is not working. And it's not easy, especially when you like go to, you know, uh, a GG online world series break series. Like I, I remember streaming on Twitch during W coops in September and stuff. There was days like, it was like I was in the matrix vortex. I'd wake up, it'd be noon. You know, I was up all night. I'm streaming, I'm playing 20 tournaments in a day, repeat next day. I don't even get a moment to like, think about what's going on. You're just like registering, registering, registering. And it's like, it's not, it's easy to get into a funk, right. Or have a bad series when, you know, taking a day off isn't a big deal. What about you? Yeah. yeah, taking breaks is really like, it's like a, such a skill, right? To know when it's time to push through and when it's time to take a break. And I think as a poker player, we lean towards like, let's push through and, oh, it's going to turn around instead of just taking a break, you know, and and uh, reassessing, kind of taking care of the body was never my strength, you know, and uh, like get the mind onto something else and then come back. You know, and it's very hard because we're chasing and so on. So, yeah. Uh oh, making me nervous. Touch is thinking here. Like, doesn't doesn't go. That'd be that's too high tech. People don't go for those those absolutely crazy. No blocker. No real whatever. Just just gave it up. Nice discipline. Ooh, wow. What this is? Is this gonna happen oh, again? Oh, might drop. We're just gonna get to jam in. Okay. At least in jam, but does Gab Gab? Oh, have a flag? come on! This is a call, Gab Gab. Don't disappoint me here. You gotta call this. Like the range is extremely wide. Yeah. Oh, he's even got the heart covered. Just walking the dog, Gab Gab. This is this is audience. Your five hundred dollars is 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 fragile right now. It's getting fr more fragile. This would be a shift in power. This could be bad here. Does he unload it? Does he unload it? Or does he show a little discipline? Check back. You got just three six a heart. Okay, good good. Yeah, interesting. He doesn't continue here with the range advantage. ICM pressure is huge. Get get checks back. Wow. Yeah, now comes the bluff. 3.8, five, yeah, thank you. Thirty-eight. So he saves saves a little from just sho open shoving. Twenty-three. We can't really get much more even. Forty-eight to forty-five million. Phil, we got to sweat. We got all four in. Jeff, the whole stream is about intuition so far, and you have not trusted your intuition on Hades, and he's gonna win.
yeah, I think I had a downswing, like probably like 500 buy-ins or something like that. How many? Maybe 500 buy-ins. Yeah, and it's crazy, you know, you're going to dancing, I can poke out, then the, the, at the same time staking and business, everything went to shit at the same time, you know, it's kind of like when something goes good and it goes good in all areas. Oh, we have here uh, the setup of the setups, huh? Wow. Wow. I mean, that is... Uh... This is it, yeah, there's, there's no... No real path. I'm not folding anywhere. Card. Yeah, calls and wow, Queen Haas gets the perfect run out, perfect situation. All the draws miss. King Queen, King Seven. We got a new chip leader. There's no way he's getting away. This is just such a brutal setup. I mean, he's blocking the 6 7. Uh, yeah. And Alex Kulev is sitting there. <laughs> He's sitting there counting his money with his 8 million chips. Wow. Christmas time. Wow. We got a, you got all of a sudden, I mean, man, this is, uh, yeah. So what it's basically 48, 48 on the dot, 45, 48, but Haas's. Oh, and this is going in. Wow. Yeah. This might be some of these spots, you know? Like the call is not the yeah. Could consider your folding to keep it alive, but I think it's too... nine and a jack on the flop. Sweat card, nope. Yep, sweat yes. card. It is yeah. Oh man, the fake. I didn't even see the spade. Of course, the the trip jacks is gonna do it. No spade. And here we go. Three handed. A lot of money up for grabs. Will be a seven figure club if you are to get in the next spot the pay jump but big money big money guaranteed already lot to play for lot to play for and we are we are going to see alex kulev and hazes so hazes in season two played 21 times six caches two final tables alex kulev also two final tables in season two. Hey, it's going in. It's going, Alex could have jammed it. The King Jack cool up. Wow. 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 This is a big spot. And that is pretty concise. Oh, little sweat, little 10% runner, runner, never net Phil. It's never easy. No, it's clean. It's clean. And now oh, advantage Phil. Uh, Hazes. I told you it's going to be Hazes. You, I just, you kind of felt like you knew. And now, I mean, 60, 35. It is, uh, it is, it is a, it's not looking great for our friend, but Hey, there's still a lot of play. Yeah. Heads up. It's such a, it's such a gamble now, you know, like 35 big blinds, but it's now it's nice to see for me, like, how do these guys play like these short stack heads up matches? I've played a lot of heads up a lot, like also cap game, 30 big blinds. Um, Man, you will see a lot of limping. And a lot of bluffing. Like, heads up is a lot of air versus air. Yeah, heads up's always fascinating, right? You just don't know. I mean, this is a, you just don't really know how much ability and, and again, what, what kind of experience practice players have done. And again, it's always a, it's a short amount of time, right? Like it's one game, one match, one hand, one cooler, 40, 55, not a lot separating them, the players here, the chip's really close. 
Yeah, and Hazen has only one minute left in the time bank, so that's going to be gone soon, and we have a nice nap heads and match. Nines to six ten. All right, boys, we got a game here. We have some. We have a lot of. Uh, there is. There is plenty to play for. A lot of money on the line. Forty fifty three million. Ace king suited tier one jackpot. That's a nice hand. Heads up. That is a nice hand. And gonna go ahead, pop it up, take it down. Feeling a dramatic flip, Phil. I think we we're just we haven't really had a lot of huge all ins. There's been a lot of post flop, a lot of play. I feel like we might get a big one, like a big flip, something crazy. Yeah, Haas is the reg. He's good. Yeah, I was just explaining on their results as we got it all in and touch the the touch some grass. Doesn't have as much overall experience with five appearances in season three. Twenty one in. Let's see, in season three, he's got uh, three appearances, no caches. So, yeah, these guys, it's going to be a new winner here. Neither of them have a Super Millions win before. King Deuce, Jack 5, and King Deuce with top pair and bottom pair, top and bottom, the missionary. Jack 5, does he have a, does he go for value here or slip it over? I guess you could, you could argue. Probably needs to value bet, right? Yeah, you have a, you have a lot of, lot to choose from, heads up. Uh, I'm quite surprised Hayes is not barreling the jack high here. He has, he gets five timing points. Ace king suited, king eight, got the limp going. I, I did want to ask you about the limp strategy as I will announce the winner here very shortly. For the, we're gonna make it a hundred dollars anyway, guys. I don't know, even though I'm just gonna give you a hundred. You guys have been excellent. It's been a long show. We're gonna do a hundred today. Um, make it a hundred. Uh, the limp strategy. Yeah, what? I feel like this was a for a while as people were limping, like 15, 20, 30, 25 blinds. You know, we're worried about people shoving or raise flame. And now I see a lot more limping going on at a little deeper stack depths. What, what's your thought on that? Heads up and limping. Yeah, like it's a bit like this concept again of we don't want to fold too much equity out, you know, we want to like get in very cheap if we have like a crappy hand, you know, and not call too much if we, you know, if we, if we want to see a flop cheap and we want to maximize in position play. That's where it's a bit, why it's so much limping is also because now you're in position after you limp. So you can limp a lot of hands uh, profitably that you cannot raise profitably. So that's why you have a little bit of a limping range. I mean, a big part of limping range. And big, big spot there. King eight turns a, a magical card, brings a flush draw, gets value, and then holds. And now here we go, a little flip flop, 50 to 40 million. So five to four. Check raise is incoming. I love to play heads up. I really enjoy it a lot. I burn my hands a little bit against the top players, but in tournament heads ups, I've been quite successful. So it paid off in another way, you know? <laughs> I learned from the top players and uh, Got it back in all my tournaments. Yeah, lot, lot of, it's nice, right? It's nice if it's it's funny in tournaments too. The payouts, the pay jumps are so big. The trophies, the titles, the glory, the to get it, to actually be you know to win when you get there. If you have like a however many big heads ups in your life to actually win and. Here, looking what we're playing for, over three hundred thousand dollars, and of course the circuit ring, all the accolades, the glory that goes with it as well. 
it's nice to win. It's just nice to win. It's a big difference. But still, I think everyone's going to be happy with the million plus. And, you know, Phil and I got a little side action here. And we are in a battle. Queen three suited. Queen high. Decides the call. And if you're going to float, that is a float to hit. The ten of hearts. He's actually in the lead. The interesting of Hazes goes for it or doesn't. And now with both players missing. But queen high with the best hand. Yeah, it's almost bottom of his range. No, like, what 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 worse things can you have? Six million here is nice. Yeah. Computer hand. So queen seven so, off. Like, Back to the limping thing, you know, he's raising the queen seven off. If he limps and then gets a raise, he has to fold queen seven. If he raises here and the guy calls, it's okay. If the guy slippers, you easily fold. So that's how you can make up your ranges in general. What would I do if I get action? And that decision has to be very clear. So three, four, if somebody raises, I fold, no big deal. Yep, three, five, nine, 10 off, 58, 35, big match here, nine, 10 and three, five, quite a flop. Two, seven, four, rainbow, three, five, having a pretty sweet flop to not pair. Have a sneaky open edit here. And want to mention the beat the best March giveaway, 10 million on GG Poker. There's a lot going on right now, that's for sure, especially in the middle of this two-thirds of the way through this 100 million guaranteed 18 circuit rings for GG. This is number 12 right here, main event, March 27th, $500 buy-in, 5 mil guaranteed. Pretty nice card for 9, 10 off. I mean, what happened here? Guys? Wow. Oh, hey, this. Wow. And if you're nine ten, you barrel barrel and you got ten high. And I mean this is this is problematic. But what was the action? Limp? It was limp. Yeah. And then? and then it was lead call, lead call. Well, the good news is for, for touch, the yeah, fans of touch out there, he's not gonna lose a ton here. Dead even for the title. Dead even. What a sweat. We got a lot of bang for our buck. Appreciate everyone. We're going to announce the winner here very shortly. Dustin H., good to see you. A lot of, a lot of familiar faces, new faces as well. Always fun to hang with you guys. And we are 5-6 suited. Queen 7 up. That is a computer hand. Five six out flops queen seven off. Gonna get a nice open ended draw. Get to bet.
Queen Jack 10 3. Both players make a pair. Nolan and Holden, very hard to make a pair. Heads up poker. Both players are going to like this flop. Advantage of Hazes here. Yeah, I wonder if Touch can somehow get away from this. Like, it's really tough, like, with these stack sizes, like, against uh, capable opponents. <clears throat> it's very hard to fold the turn. This one, he. Oh, this one he might get away. Yeah, this is uh this gets a lot less attractive now. Okay, Hazes is out of time. The time bank now. Know. This is getting interesting. Very rare we see the time bank. Very rare. Five hundred dollar giveaway, guys. Get a chance. Still hit the retweet. Comment on my pin tweet on Jeff Gross Poker on Twitter. Although it's really fifty fifty right now, a little less than fifty fifty. King seven, king queen. Ooh. Ooh. Uh, Ooh, king seven gets a little stronger. Here's the ace. And a winner. We are we are pretty even here, Phil. Phil, a thousand extra on the side of dinner. I mean a nice dinner, a sweat. This is exciting. Yeah, like a five hundred dollar dinner, huh? At least. Oh yeah, it's it's open. It's uh, invite guests, friends, <laughs> fans. If anyone is in the area that's in the chat, help <laughs> Fine. Anybody you know. <laughs> if you happen to be, if you happen to be, see Phil and I nice have dinner, dinner in this chat. Come oh, and sit down. wow! <laughs> what a match! I mean, it's forty-seven a man, Phil. I mean, I got a slight lead. I'll let you buy out if you want. No, 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 no! I have huge trust in Hayes. Although momentum shifted a little bit now, like you didn't see that hand with the king seven, nice value bet, and you know, feels good. She get like a nice value bet in. I hope Hayes can recover. They both play very good, you know. All right. But you see a very light pause, like 10 8, when it was 8 high bet, the flush door is calling the, the flop. And now he has a chance to, to bluff. Not the best bluffing hand, but a reasonable bluff. And he will get away with it. If he doesn't raise, that would be funny. Raise him, Hazes. Without the timing. Oh, and tough, mm. tough life. Uh oh, Phil. Getting there. This is intense. 600, there's still plenty of play. 1200 big blind. I and mean, we're going for a record. This is definitely what we're talking. Going close. It could be four hours here. Yeah. Okay, so we're not going to do my final table anymore. We. But we can do it. I would love to do a final table review with you on um, your final table. Do some do some talk, some hands and stuff. That actually be fun. We we should lock in a podcast. You want to do it this week? Maybe another time. Uh, today is too much. Uh, no, no, not I... today. Not to bro. Please today. I a four hour day. I I'm getting old. I, I used to stream 15 hour Twitch days every day. I can't. This is like I'm I'm struggling here. But uh, yeah, no, we'll choose a day for a podcast. Well, if people are having fun, they can come watch. We'll record it someday coming up here. Good. Yeah, yeah, I'd love to do that. I'd love to do it. Yeah. Also to see like what happened. Uh, I, I can't recall anything. Yeah. Going to bet. Gets caught. And touch. Taking a touch out of Haas's stack. Yeah. A little separation. Bill 6036 getting a little close. <laughs> getting the two to one range here. 
<laughs> a little separation from the intuition. Hazes, come back. You can play without time, Max. Don't worry about the fucking time. Fire. I was playing extremely aggro the heads up and I also had no time bank. And I feel like I'm almost playing better without the time bank because I don't overthink everything and Yeah, it's true. Well, momentum is not for hazes, but I feel like, you know, the, the luck shifts like every once in a while. Somebody asked also something about this, you know, I feel like it's, it's shifting and you got to survive, you know, when luck is not on your side and you're having a bit of a tough time, like just lose the minimum, like it's really, really important. I wonder if they're listening to us, you know, or if they're focused on the game. I guess they just look the cards, you know, you can't listen and play as too much, uh, but they're surely watching the cards, huh? Yeah. Well, Hals has got a winner here. If he can hold on, 10-8, got an 8, Jack-8-5-3-4. Eight, Easy value bet. All right, eight, nine, four, five. A couple of playable hands. But I really see, like, Touch is playing a bit looser. Like, I'm not sure if Hayes is a heads up player or if he has experience. <clears throat> you gotta play extremely, extremely loose. You gotta play extremely loose heads up against another good player. Yeah, it's hard. It's hard to know. So again, short sample, certain situations, board textures, spots. Yeah, it's like you get, you only get so many. There's only so much opportunity in a short amount of time here. Blinds start getting consolidated. You can see the blinds will be up in nine hands, and, and here they'll both players with the same hand. Four three. Did he just raise a call? No it's call. Right. Queen king ten. Two spades. Possible hands beating. Left hand bluff. Chop it up. Oh, shit. Oh, wow. Oh, he snap called it. Eh? All in and snap called. Okay, <laughs> okay. That was sick. That was sick. Five, three, queen deuce. So here I've got the gut shot spade though. They're possible, likely not going to be. gets called quickly so 68 27 million things are separating a bit no 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 worries no worries
Ooh, this got this has a making Phil. This has got the making of of it. Six ten, queen jack, open ended. He's got a lot of outs. It's against the pair. Maybe takes a stand. Got mid pair call. Ooh, Ooh. Hey, look out! Look out, Hazes. I'm gonna put the winner in the uh -oh, chat. Oh, the Hazes. Hazes. I hope it's check. Could, oh, he slows down though. We dodged. I I dodged it. I dodged it. Not the worst spot to put the heat on, you know, against the king. All right, one more minute to hit the thumbs up, get that in. I'm making a hundred dollars. I don't even know if it's a hundred or not. I'm making it a hundred, and there's a five hundred dollar tweet that's looking juicier on my Twitter, Phil. It's you're tagged in there, the real Phil Bort is in there and we've got only 23 people 25 have retweeted i'm going to copy it one more time i'm going to put it here and drop it in but it'll be a 500 dollars giveaway if somehow touch can can hold on i shouldn't have done 500 right that's a little bit we'll have to let that marinate for a little bit if somehow i can win it that's a lot we should have uh if you're generous or if you're generous yeah you're, you're generous you're but hey, you, I, I mean i got a generous line right like on the i on won the flip i got the chips and it's not over I'm not counting it's over yet, Phil. I, it's not, is that, it's not over yet. But that is the tweet, and my pin tweet on. It's not over. I mean, I mean, I see it's not over. I'm not getting cocky. I'm just trying to give him. I'm trying to preface it because if it ends, it could be over in a second. I want him to know there's a five hundred dollars on the line on my on the thing right there. King nine, queen five. Oh, somebody's getting nasty here. Wow. You gotta call the king nine bro, yes. Oh, oh lay, oh, oh boy. Tough to play, both, both hands are very funny, interesting to play. Does King Nine just have to attack here? I mean, on this board, the gut shot, two overs, fold off some bigger hands, and against an over pair, you got the six. Check. Seven, eight, nine, ten now open ended. Queen five. The board doesn't get more attractive. It goes check, bet, fold, check, bet, fold. Okay, check, check. All right, we got the winner there. It's at Yoon's. There he is, Yoon's Omenimo. Sixty-two to thirty, two to one, Phil. It's two to one. I mean, this is just anyone's game. It's too intense for me. I like it a little bigger lead. I get nervous here because it's like a lot can happen. Even here now, it's he's he's out. It's just not good. Pair versus a different pair. It's so much more fun with a bit of money on it, huh? It is more fun with a little sweat. It gets a little value belt blocker in there, a little value something maybe, but the eight, the eight, does he turn it to four into a bluff maybe? Eight, five, eight, tens of straights and two pairs, 1.6. Maybe he realizes he's not good. He's got something going here. Does he just yeah. kick it up? Is it like eight million? Is he just pushing it? No. Good fold. Yeah, only bluffs are like jack, eight, ten, jack. Queen something maybe. Jack, it would be so nice to be able to bet on these things. Also for the stream, you know, I imagine like people watch the stream, they could bet on uh, GG or somewhere else.
Come back for Hades. Exactly like my heads up. I, I lost a little bit in the middle. And then I came back to glory. Three, four, seven, ten. Nine four. All right, fifty seven thirty five. It's narrowing. It is narrowing. It's too close to call. Hundred dollar giveaway winners pick. Five hundred dollar giveaway up for grabs. That is on my pin tweet, and it is uh, got a you got a good advantage if you're here because not everyone's gonna know about it. It's just you know five hundred, five hundred large. Lights up again. Ah, and now it's not going to take long anymore. How many people are watching, uh, Jacob? Where do you see that? That number is there is still, let's see, 1800 watching. It shows just below the uh, GG Poker subscribers there. And King Six, A7, real hands here. Ooh, Phil, this is an important one. This is an important yeah, one. Bets, wait, wait. A7, King 6. I mean, this, if we're looking for blue cards if you're, if you're a fan of touch. And at the moment, A7 is looking all that more powerful. We could be back to even Steven or, or different even. Ah, but he's not very. Late. But yeah. He has to, oh, he checks back to a seven. This is a, this is, this is definitely a good, it's not overall pretty good. One of the better cards for Hobbs on the river, right? His opponent improves, doesn't beat him. A seven still good, 13 million. A lot going on on the board. It's heads up poker though. He's got the a seven kicker, loses to not a lot of hands. He's getting checked to, does decide to value bet here. I think he can fold this. So many ace x. Ace x. What is he bluffing here? You know, what's he bluffing here? Like, yeah, this is not a good call in my opinion. King Jack, Queen Ten. I could check, like, make something strong now. He's gonna regret that one. Yeah, that's tough. Well, guys, the this is this is intense. This is intense. This has actually gotten real again. This is back to, to Steven even a seven in the lead, calling seven million in the middle, Jack Nine speeding. No pair, no turn equity, additional draw. So Jack Nine off, just Jack High. Time clock for Haas is a is a factor. He's gonna come with the lead out. I love the lead turn board pair. A7 actually denies some equity there, puts his opponent in a bit of a tough spot. I wonder how much it affects no shot clock, zeros on the board. It can't be an advantage for sure, but does it hurt a lot or a little? It's hard to say. Yeah, lead on the paired board is really interesting, for, especially heads out. It's, it's quite interesting. These spots, equity run so close and you have more bluffs. Oh, okay. Are we going to play the chicken game or not? Big bet. Whoa. Queen of Spades on the turn.
<laughs> Queen of Spades on the roof. Big pot. Big pot. Jack six, though, with a key card. Does he just know he has to bluff here? He does. Oh, it goes for the small sizing. The 10 calls. Too much in the middle. Big moment there. Hmm. Yeah, I was thinking all in would be nice. Yeah, I don't know. I mean, look, it's, it's again, short sample, taking a lot of notes. It's gonna be an interesting highlight video, but this is, uh, I'd say definitely he's had the best of it. Touch seems a little more, you know, again, it's so hard, right? Can you really say that? Maybe just the distribution, the board runouts, the spots, but just little things. W would you say, I mean, the chips, it's easy to sort of say that, that touch has had his way, but he also doesn't have a shot clock, made a few more hands maybe, but w what do you think, Phil, if you, just in terms of how the heads up's broken so far? No, yeah, I would, I would think they are very close in, in skill, you know. Like, let's say we played this like a million times. Like, I think it's going to be very close. Uh, touch has more. I had more luck for sure, and I had some match so far. Yeah. You know, these guys are very good players, you know, it's just so tough to, to make the correct sizings and play, you know, like it's so much that you could think of, you know. And uh, I think they both never played a heads up that big, you know, so it's like, and for the title and the ring. And on stream, you know, it's also, you know, they, they know that they're on stream, you know, and it's important. Yeah, there's a block bet here. Nice. Oh, that was not so little. Yeah, it makes sense, you know, like any pair that's before with this uh, three flush, it's heads up. Like I think touch has like a very strategical approach to, to the calling game and it's gonna call yeah, not not intuitive. Like he's calling the hand that are supposed to be a call and, and so on. Yeah. Yeah, this is a ooh, big, big flop. Yeah, huge turn. Um, wow. Yeah, I mean, touch, touch, just such a. I mean, he's got such a nice thing going here. The semi bluff picks up whatever. He's got a lot happening. Jack three. He's got the. Yeah, he checks back because he doesn't want to give up the equity. Uh, you know, if he gets checked, Jan is like a disaster. And if it. Go check, check. You can bluff nicely now. And oh, oh, 
Do not watch the replay. It's going to be so painful when I watch my replay because then I see all the times they block me, you know. Like... <laughs> Oh, here we have a little collision. Whoa, a bit more than a little collision. This could be, I mean, ace five kings heads up the dynamic. He's going to, because it, but does he? Yeah, I'm also getting a sizing play. Three bets smaller probably than normal with the kings. Oh, and he jams it in. Oh my goodness. Big, Guys. big, big balls. Oh, big balls get paid. Oh my god. Oh my goodness. Oh my oh goodness. My to, the, to the river. Oh, <laughs> no way. I can't believe. Oh, he was covered. I thought he actually had him covered. Wow, Phil, 93 to 1 chip lead. And what a get there. I mean, audience, $500 tweet is very live. 44 people in there. King 3, Queen 9 needs a 10 to end it. Queen 9 to take it. Queen 9 or 10, either way. Could be a little more poker there's a little more poker audience i'm gonna get you the tweet right now holy goodness you are 90 to 1 or actually it's different now what's it 290 to 2, 45 to 1 favorites to get a 500 giveaway on my <laughs> right now favorite. that was crazy what a, what, a got, what did i say like uh, uh courage favors the no uh, destiny favors the the, the courageous ones very courageous shot there with ace five wow. and wow wow ace five versus kings for all the money there it is 500 dollars giveaway there's the link twitter pin tweet but this is not over yet Jack nine, queen 10. I mean, man, he's a little spin cycle going here. There's a nine. He is two to one favorite to end it 80%. Phil, don't try to energy me. I see that look. Uh, don't try to energy <laughs> me. It has been a lot of play and that is going to do it there, guys. That is it. $500 giveaway on my team for a poker, courtesy of a, a gamble with Phil, but I decided to put 50% on the line. You guys are legends. I appreciate it. This was an absolute treat of a final table and you're gonna get to take uh, a look here at what happened there is a uh, absolute absolute treat phil what do you think i mean i think we set a record four hours and 15 minutes i feel bad even you know i feel like with a thousand now i might have to just like take you to dinner or something because i won the thousand five hundred giveaway you know i might just treat myself that was five four hours is a lot to ask from a guest and we'll do our podcast later moving on and phil where can they follow you on social media twitter instagram where can they do it yeah, guys, add me on Instagram, the real Phil Borg, and same on Twitter. Same on Those Twitter. Those two are good. Guys, this was it. This was event number 12. It was the uh, uh, Super Million Special Edition circuit ring was on the line. Really, really well played from the from the players today. I thought that was an amazing battle. It was, it was close to calling the end. A lot of players really went for it. They put pressure. They made bluffs. We saw big all-ins. We got to see what Super Millions is all about. And again, we'll be back next Tuesday. Jungle Man will be the guest. We will have another very special event for you here. And as always, the Super Millions 245 Eastern Tuesdays. I'll be your host with one of the best poker players in the world as a guest, as we saw here today with Phil. So thank you so much. And again, you got to beat the best. That's very what Super Millions is all about. Well, hey, thank you very much, Jeff. And much love to the players. Like I appreciate it a lot. And yeah, take care. Jeff, peace out. Good job. See you guys next week. 500 giveaway my Twitter. Pin tweet. Good luck. See you next week.